And so they were like, wear your glasses. And I was All like, right, this, is, this is fine reading like this. I can, I can see you guys just fine. <laughs> All right, we are live, and welcome to Incredit Chat. I'm Michael Grassi. I'm here with Vinny and Ryan. Hello, gentlemen. And Hello, everybody. And everybody. And Mike Lopez might be joining us tonight. He's having some computer issues. So uh, our first one when you were you were down for the count still, um, Mike he he did he did a really good job. He did a really yeah, good. No, job. I, I watched a little bit later on as, as <laughs> after it was on. Um, he because was when, when he hooked up to Alexa, he yeah, couldn't, Sam White couldn't hear anything. <laughs> I gotta I gotta rewatch them because I haven't seen everything yet. Um, <laughs> oh, I did the same thing I did last time. I bought it on my phone. It's okay. I I was. Uh, What's the word? I was so out of it. I did so much sleeping that Mike would text me or call or whatever. I wasn't getting back to people for days. You know, I was just literally so out of it that Mike, we're going on on tonight. Come check us out. And I'd be like, okay. And I'd be knocked out. So I wasn't paying attention to anything. No um, worries, man. You didn't miss much. So not the <laughs> <laughs> it, it well, looked the like. It looked like I think it was the first one you guys did. It looked like you guys had a lot of fun though. It was a lot of laughter I saw. Well, getting together with you guys is always fun. So, yes. you know, we always yes. have a good time talking about <laughs> BS. So yes. we're we're always happy to um, you know, flex our pop culture. Yeah. Oh, my screen just went out. Am I still uh -oh. with you guys? Yes, you are. You're here. You okay, look fine, well, and everything. My my screen is completely black, so I'm just assuming uh, that Did you maybe you went to sleep? <laughs> Nope, nope, there it is. It was probably just updating okay. something. I don't know. All right. Uh, anyway. Yeah. What kind of BS do you want to talk about tonight? So I really little, had some ideas. A little bit what we were going to talk about is obviously, you know, we're in a day and age where they're, the revival of everything, they're bringing back all the stuff. We talked a little bit about the Ghostbuster toys that are out yeah. uh, right now. Um, they have the new Netflix uh, Transformers that are coming out. There's a Hasbro is bringing out some new GI Joe line, so they're bringing they're bringing back the hits that all of us are in our 40s and 50s. We're all in our prime, probably financial. You know, uh, we're all made for uh, uh, easy pickings. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, one of the things that I thought was really cool about this Renaissance is some of that some of the talented actors, writers, um, and other people in the industry that are kind of getting their second win, their second chapter. But kind of around this around this renaissance of and a good example a couple examples i brought up when we were kind of chatting and, and texting each other ideas was um keanu reeves and stephen king yeah you know keanu well, reeves, and, 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 for that, yeah. and for that matter someone like stephen king is like on his third or fourth wind so you know it's not yeah. even just a it's not even yeah. just a doubling over i mean he had his his 70s career and then he had his well, he had his he had his authorial yeah. career. Yeah. Then he had his '80s movie career. Then you had all the '90s television miniseries career stuff. Then you had all of the 2000s movie stuff, like Dreamcatcher and all those movies. And now it's like one of the things that happened with his one of the things I could speak to on on his uh, situation is that he just gained back all of his own uh, copyright for. For me, for for movies. So now, right. from now on, most of the work that comes out is not him selling it to Universal or to Paramount or whatever. It's him being directly involved in it. So when you see, that's the reason why this last Pet Cemetery kind of got pushed yeah. out because they were just about to lose the Pet Cemetery license. Really, they kind of pushed out a kind of a subpar movie. It wasn't terrible, but he didn't have a lot of input on it. Whereas now, like. The Stand uh, miniseries that's going to be coming out on HBO, I think, he's in much more control on that. So, and, and the same with a lot of his different work. Um, but yeah, no, there, there's been a ton of stuff. And one other thing I would also mention that as Vinny was talking, I just thought of is that now a lot of the writers and artists and directors and, and, and all the people above the line, below the line, everyone working on all these projects or our age, you know, yeah, and that's why we're seeing all the stuff come back, you know, all the stuff that we loved growing up that people wanted to work on that people dreamed of working on. That's why all this stuff is back now. 
Not only that, but they don't have to pay for any additional creative, you know, um, not creative input or licensing, but like Hasbro already owns GI Joe. Exactly. So it makes sense for them to do it. He Man is already owned by Mattel. So, which, whatever, Mattel got bought out by, I think, another company, but still, you know. Yeah. Well, I think they're still Mattel themselves. They're just under, you know, just owned by another company. Well, I know, like, um, like Kenner got bought by Hasbro. So, yeah. We know right. it's yeah. I don't know. I don't even know if it's still Kenner actually. If they just all that is all that new Star Wars stuff just Hasbro or is it Kenner still? It's I haven't Has- looked. I don't know. I don't. It is well, Hasbro. It, uh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. When they bought the Kenner line, that was specifically what it was, which is ironic because Hasbro originally passed on the Star Wars line back yeah. in the seventies. Foolishly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, I believe they said something along the lines of, "Who's going to want to play with three and three quarter inch figures?" Meanwhile, Star Wars, G.I. Mm-hmm. Joe. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, I thought we'd talk a little bit about that, a little bit about, like, what kind of, uh, you know, I think our it's turning out that our usual segment has been, like, a little bit of what we've been watching this last week, yeah. like, what's new or what we've revisited. Um, but oh, Dick, Dickie Baxter, sorry. Let yeah, me just we got, say, I was going to say. Dickie Baxter, number one, number one comment again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, I sent him to voicemail, so he knew I must have been doing the only other thing besides answering Dickie's phone calls and talking to my wife is is being online with you guys. So he must have been like, okay, so I know Melissa's home. Like, and this is this is the third is this the third week in a row that he's been the number one comment? At least two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely our number one commenter. And I only Thank you, Dickie. I, I only have my page open right now, so I can watch comments yeah. on my page. So I don't see what's going on. on well, uh, Billy Iverson is that how you say Iverson? He says Billy, hey, I- Vinny. Hey, uh, Billy, Billy's uh, an awesome marketing uh, uh, local marketing mastermind. Um, he works a lot with Dickie and uh, acquisitions marketing. Does a lot of our online stuff for our real estate and other local businesses. Okay. So but Billy's a cool dude. Uh, Great. Yeah. I uh. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to look over here myself and see on the Incredicon page separate in case I don't see stuff. So I'm seeing how. Back to um, but you were saying about Stephen King. I purposely wanted to talk about him. I knew you'd have a lot to to uh, share with that, Ryan. And oh, I should have worn my Stephen King rule shirt. Damn it! <laughs> Damn I am. It. I'm actually like definitely. Uh, I'm less of a Stephen King fan than like. Not that I dislike him. I just never. There's definitely. Um, a cult following. Well, it's a, it's a big following. It's not a cult yeah. following anymore. It's like people who are like, "Oh, you're a Star Wars fan? Like, who isn't? It's a billion dollar franchise." We but, went to um, several years ago, maybe uh, two, or three years ago, maybe. We went to Maine specifically uh, and visited all of the different places that all of his stories were set on. In addition to going to his house, and he was there, and we didn't walk <laughs> up the front what? door. Really? Because we were like, well, we don't want to be those kind of people. And then later on, we stopped at um, like a deli or something, something. And we said, oh, we were just at Stephen King's house. And he was like, oh, you should have walked up there. He has people in all the time. We were like, damn it. <laughs> we don't want to be those people. I'm sure he has to have a book about that. Yes, right? my, my, my wife just said, yes, the gates were open. Okay. And we were watching like his his. Um, uh, his mate or something like unload the car and we were like ah damn it but we didn't want to be those people very cool house though very cool uh victorian house with like a uh, a wrought iron gate out front with yeah. like spiders and bats in it very cool um i was uh i was a really big fan. I, was a, I was a really big fan i've been watching the dog. i've been watching castle yeah my dog sorry um i've been watching castle rock which i like um, and now they have that new HBO series coming out, the um, uh, Overlook Hotel. Yes. So I'm, I'm cautious about myself. <laughs> Don't let it be bad. Don't let it be bad, right? Yeah. I, you know, I, if he's involved, I have, you know, oh, Barbara just said Cujo barking in the background. And Dickie says, it scared me for life. And I don't well, disagree with Well, which one, him. Dickie? The original one or the new ones? The original one scarred me, definitely for yeah. sure. The original I will one cut it out. I haven't seen the new ones. Um, I have no interest in it. I'm not a I'm not a horror fan. I'm not into the suspense like that. Um, so for me, I appreciate Stephen King. I'm just not a fan of of I'm not gonna really watch a lot of his his stuff where it's it's a little on the on the I don't wanna say horror, but a little more on the um 
I guess, darker side of your of, of the mind? Well, he, you know, it's interesting, too. I was just thinking about this the other day. My mother is a huge um, Stephen King fan. That's where I caught the bug uh, when I was younger. Um, she read all the books, and then, you know, I kind of got more into the, the movie side of it and television side of it, but I've read most yeah. of the books. And um, I was thinking about this the other day, actually, when Vinny had mentioned this, and that's that um, there's a lot of writers uh, that are Stephen King's peers that didn't make it as big as him. I mean, I think he just really like a lot of people in a lot of industries, you just kind of get lucky, you yeah. know, and something just struck, not to say that he's not a great writer because he is a great writer, but yeah. there are a lot of other writers. Um, you know, Dean Koontz is all, always brought up as like uh, one of his peers um, mm -hmm. did plenty of movies. Um, you know, I would say Clive Barker is in that group of people, you know, okay. give or take um, age wise. Yeah. So, you know, I think, it, and there's like Vinny just, I mentioned this last week. Vinny gave me the book, The Wolf Hour, The Wolf's Hour to read. Robert McCann, a great yeah. writer that nobody knows about. Yeah. Same yeah. generation. I think he's yeah. about the same age as them. And, you know, he just didn't yeah. make it as big. But Robert that doesn't mean the work isn't as great, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think Robert McCammon's uh, most famous work is uh, Night of uh, Speak the Nightbird, uh, which is probably his most famous work. But, um, I think one of Stephen King's caveats or one of the things that really held him uh, apart from other people is content. He just pumped books out. That's the oh. thing. I mean, the way he works, it's, it's, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to write for this long and, yeah. and he's just, okay, well I have a book and he, he could, he literally could put out a book a month. I mean, he's a, yeah. A, well, he, he, in that way. he puts out something like a book a year. Look at someone mm -hmm. like Robert Pattinson. Um, Robert Pattinson, also a uh, Newburgh native. He's from Newburgh. Um, he literally puts out a book a month, but he has a bunch of other writers that he works with yeah. that he basically farms out ideas and says, okay, you write this, and then we're basically going to kind of write it together. But he does literally put out a book every month. Um, you know, there's nothing speaking to quality at that point. Sometimes when you put out so much stuff, the quality might not be there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not going to fault him for doing so much work, that's for sure. I'm with Grassi though. I am terribly, I'm terrible with scary movies. Like Dickie said, I, I don't watch scary movies. I will not go to a theater to watch a scary movie. <laughs> I, have, I have to watch it during the daylight. Oh, I, I'm the same way. I, I've never seen what? a saw. I've never seen a saw movie. Like I won't. I can't. I, I I have seen a saw movie in the in the theaters once, but it's I will say this: my wife. We could be watching something scary. The second it gets dark, it's the sun starts going down. I'm like, you got to turn it off. I can't do it. And, and for me, I know it's my imagination. I'm not scared. I'm not like literally scared of the film. But when I'm finally sitting down or laying down, going to bed, and it's in my head now because I'm just replaying the day, I'm, I'm kind of getting imaginative and I'm starting to think of things. And then all the shadows and everything. And that, that's when it starts going through my head. And I'm like, oh, crap, what was that? Any little creak, any little sound I hear. And, it, and it's, it's like now all of a sudden that movie that I was watching four or five hours ago just popped in my head. And, and getting up to even go to the bathroom, it's like, crap. Like, the visions are there. You feel like you're going to hallucinate the, 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 the bad guy. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll admit that I am scared of the dark. It doesn't matter. I'm not scared of... You know, I'm not scared of the movie. I'm literally scared of the dark. I always have it. Uh, so I'll admit that right now. And let me also add that my wife so lovingly corrected me and said it's James Patterson, not Jim, yes. not Robert Patterson, who is Robert Patterson, son, who is a vampire that we all know. Yes, we, uh, and also actually, Batman. I was actually going to go through some uh, some of the uh, comments. So we got, uh, it looks like Vinny, your wife, says she agrees with me, I guess, on the Stephen King and the darker stuff. Karen... Griffin says, looking good, Ryan. And I too love Stephen oh, King movies. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, who is it? Donna Wooten, oh. love the wolf hour. And I still have yet to read it. Vinny, let, just like Wonder Woman, Vinny let me for two years and I didn't watch it. Wait a minute. Vinny we have, we have, a, we have another fan of the wolf hour in here? Yes. yes. Her name. Oh, my favorite it? book of all time. Donna Wooten. Donna Wooten. I love that person. I can't believe the dual sour. Oh, Donna, you're going to be on next week. You're replacing me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, the cops are coming for me right now. Gotta uh, go. Oh, you can hear it from my uh, house here. <laughs> I live. I literally live a five minute walk to a hospital, so I'm always hearing sirens all the time. I didn't think about it when I moved in. I only thought, "Wow, I have medical issues. It'd be great to be close to a hospital." <laughs> and, and then I moved in, and at like five thirty in the morning. You're hearing a cop car or an ambulance going off, or so now I'm accustomed to them. I don't even really notice them half the time. But oh my god, when we moved up, I grew up in the city, and when we moved up here, well, I, you know, when I was a kid, uh, the silence was deafening up here. I was so used to listening to cop cars and you know, in the distance, cars, people walking past the house talking. And then uh -huh. up here, it was crickets, and it was like. Talk about scary, actually. Talk about Stephen King and being scary. Well, that's the thing. I grew up in Mayapak, which isn't too far, what, about 40 minutes north of you guys. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have cop cars always going off. I, I, It was like I didn't even have neighbors, it seemed like. I had neighbors, but they were blocked by woods and, and stuff. So it felt like I was the only one on the road. Then I moved to Yonkers, where I live now. And not in this, and not in my, not in the place I am now, but my first place. I was literally able to stick my hand out the window and touch my neighbor's house. <laughs> it was such a culture shock to me. Yeah, well, it, it's a it's a it, we're not an intimidating group when Ryan <laughs> is the edgiest of the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just to, just to give everyone an idea, I, I outsized these other two gentlemen by about a foot in height and probably about a foot or a half in width. So. And, and, and I'm the one that's like, I'm terrified of the dark. And you're the only one that can watch scary movies in the dark because <laughs> I, I only watch them at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I watch scary movies and get terrified. And you know what? I can beat up somebody that's coming at me with a knife. But, man, if it's a clown with a fucking cleaver, <laughs> excuse me, with an effing cleaver, I'm throwing my wife in front. That's why, that's why I got married. That's why I'm with my wife. It's because when something bad happens, I throw her in front. <laughs> and then I'll say, I'll call the cops. Don't worry, honey, I'll be back. I met Barb. I'm afraid, I'm afraid for that person. She's tough. <laughs> That's why I throw her in front, because I say she's got a better chance of surviving than I do. Actually, she asked a question, too, about Overlook. Um, it's We're not sure yet. We just heard that J.J. Uh, J. Abrams is going to be show running it, but I'm hoping it's an anthology series, like just oh. different time pieces, like different eras and different stories of, of people who visited the hotel. Barbara agreed with me and said it was true, but also, um, yes, she she had brought up that as you know, be the background of Grady and Grady was the in the story is the last um, caretaker. I don't, if I remember correctly, there were several caretakers that went crazy. It wasn't just the one, so right. there's a lot of meat on the bone for that. But also, what I was saying before too, if Stephen King is involved or if Joe Hill is involved, his son, which would be awesome, yeah. um, then I would really look forward to the potential fleshing out of the story, especially considering that Dr. Sleep came out and that was a sequel to The Shining. He's took taken those characters and put them into other things. But if it's just like, um, you know, if they're just trying to compete with like, um, you know, Bates Motel or something like that, it's going to be yeah. like, all right, I want something new, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and that was actually a failed um, project that, for Stephen King of the new uh, was the Dark Tower. Yeah, that movie came out terrible, and, and that was supposed to be a really a big series and and have a lot to do. So he's had a lot going on. He's got a lot of movies come out. The Two Its came out. Doctor Sleep, Pet Cemetery. He's got TV shows all over the place. So he's definitely, uh, I guess you like you said, like his third or fourth chapter right now. Yeah, he's got a lot of coals in the fire, as it were. Yeah. Um, Keanu Reeves is another one that kind of re has. This is really his third, maybe kind of his third round. But did he ever really go away? And the same with Stephen King. Did they ever really go no, away? I think they thought that, that after Keanu Reeves came out with Forty Seven Ronin, they, they thought he was he, he, Hollywood was kind of done with him. Hollywood was, and he, he John Wick was a, a surprise hit and really has thrown him back into the limelight. Like nobody saw John Wick coming. Like when. I saw the trailer for it. I was like, oh, okay. Like, it's kind of like just an action movie. And then I went to go see it. It was like, that was a lot of fun. And it's really just kind of taking a life of its own. There's John Wick 4 is coming out and the John Wick TV series. Was that based on a graphic novel? No. That's a, it wasn't. Uh, that was a regular no, trailer. That's, that's a really cool thing that we should actually talk about. And I like that you brought that up is John Wick is original IP, which is something mm -hmm. that really doesn't happen. Yeah. We don't really get that very much. We, yeah, we talked a little bit about this last week. Yeah. 
So I like supporting John Wick for that. Like it's nice because I want to see more original movies and TVs, not just stuff that's based off of um, stuff that is being regurgitated, stuff that we liked, you know, uh, new reboots, remakes like we did last week and talked about. Well, and speaking of uh, rehashes and and second wins, um, John Wick definitely strikes me as the return to the um, like '80s action movies. So yeah. something like a Die Hard or a Predator, it's the things that we really liked from our childhood, that it was, you know, a, a serviceable story. You know, you don't need to go crazy with the story. There doesn't need yeah. to be drama on top of drama on top of drama. No, the guy's had a dog. The dog got killed. And now he's going to kill everybody yeah. based yeah. on it. You know, you don't need anything further than that. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so um, yeah. popular. And you have a bullet, you have a bulletproof uh, protagonist. You know, like they just... It's all about what kind of damage they could um, endure, mm -hmm. and and throwing bigger and bigger threats at them. And it's it it's a pretty simple formula. Uh, Barb mentioned Bill and Ted Three, that's definitely coming. Yeah. So that's a little bit of the nostalgia sense that we're talking about too, like bringing back Bill and Ted. There's other stuff coming down the pike too. That's all stuff that we had seen. We talked last week possibly about there being a Back to the Future reboot. They're doing yeah. Ghostbusters, um, Scoob. No. You know, yeah. Sorry. Back to the future. What? No, just don't touch it. Just, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want that. Or just, or just do uh, a sequel. Or just I, do a sequel. Yeah, I just want to say Joe Ryan has commented, said, uh, bring on new concepts, which I agree with. I want to see new things, but I got to say, I also love seeing things from my childhood being brought back and seeing a different take on it. Um, hopefully it's a take I enjoy, but I like that, you know, because I, I will say this and – I might get a lot of hatred for it, but we've talked about cartoons. We talked, uh, you know, cartoon growing up, I'm sure we all enjoyed was Thundercats. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll go back and watch the original Thundercats and I really can't, I can't watch more than a few episodes. I don't feel it holds up when they created the new Thundercats. I didn't like the way they handled that. I felt they destroyed the sword of omens by making every sword kind of like powerful and have this gem that they were all trying to collect. I'm like, that was a dumb story. And now they have the new one for the young kids, which not for me, but hey, if the young kids are enjoying it, cool. Yeah. But I'd love to I, see a great Thundercats property. Brooklyn. I The same thing happened with me in the original Voltron. Going back and watching the, Invol the original Voltron is painful. It, it, it can be, because, but that's also because the American way it was edited, yeah. um, you know, but the new Voltron that was on uh, Netflix, that was a great story. Spectacular. I, I, I loved it. I mean, there were times I was getting, I was getting teared up <laughs> at certain, <laughs> certain characters. Those, like, those, uh, those creators, those showrunners from that Voltron yeah. series was, were actually the guys that did that Thundercats reboot that you didn't appreciate. Yeah. Um, and then they were the guys from Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. So they're into yeah. that, you know, that uh, mythology style of uh, world building. Yeah, but that, no, was great, that was a great series, and that was a good, um, I guess, nostalgic, re, you know, remerge. Which one? Avatar you're talking about? Uh, Avatar's a great original IP. Yeah, yeah. I think that the Voltron series was much better than the original. Oh, well, yeah, there, I completely agree. There's a lot of really good um, – not a, not a lot, maybe. There's a handful of good shows that work that nostalgic um, reflex that people have with yeah. while being a truly – um, new IP Venture Brothers is the first thing that oh, comes to mind. That's you know, that's something that lives completely within the realm of nostalgia, bringing it all new. You know, Rick and Morty, yeah. I think, does the same yeah. thing, right? You know, yeah, I totally agree, especially with Venture Brothers. Uh, the art style, the storytelling, uh, it has all that throwback feel to it, that retro feel to it, but. It's got contemporary writing, the funny, you know. Well, and the same thing with Rick and Morty in that, you know, all of those references that they make, they don't hammer you over the head yeah. with, hey, this reference is from this. If you get it, you do. If you don't, yeah. then that's fine. You know, you, they're going to move on. They're not giving you a lot of like, like we all know that, you know, Rick from Rick and Morty is the doc from Back to the Future. Yeah. They don't make that reference constantly. Yeah. yeah. His name is Morty. That's like one letter off of Marty. You know, like. <laughs> it's kind of like watching Castle Rock for me because I'm not a Stephen King insider. So I'm sure there's tons of little, like, nods oh. things that uh, I yeah. really I'm, gonna be, I'm sorry to interrupt. It looks like Mike is able to join. I'm bringing him in. Oh, hey, Mike. Hey, hey the Incredi King is here. <laughs> oh, God. I've got these delicious burgers. 
Oh, I'm wait a second, him. Mike. I just got significantly smaller on the screen. I don't know that I like that. Um, listen, you guys are I doing them out. Don't worry. <laughs> you guys are rocking and stuff here. Um, now you can see my whole book. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to look up like on the Brady Bunch. I, need <laughs> I wish I had a picture of you. I could yeah. grab from this and pull you into my screen. <laughs> oh, my you, and you guys are doing collectibles tonight, too. But uh, I don't want to interrupt the yes. thing. I might interrupt thing. But, um, oh, Jesus Christ. I want to do collectibles, too. I'm, I'm just trying to get sorted out because I, I had to stay on forever with uh, Apple Care. But, um, but we're cool now. I had to reset the computer. <laughs> Anyways, I'll, I'll try and pop back on. But um, if, if I don't pop on, remember, tomorrow night, Father Evil will be here talking about conventions, cosplay, and, you know, creating. creating. So I just wanted the to pop I'm gonna the, be famous, the famous line from the Simpsons is be there and be square. Be there and be square. What yep. is that? I don't remember that. The Simpsons, the the oh. bi-mon sci-fi con. The bi monthly sci-fi con that they don't <laughs> <No, laughs> like anymore either. I but, like how we individually like out nerd each other every once in a while. <laughs> like all of a sudden I'll be like, man, I'm a nerd, but I'm not like Ryan nerd. And then, and then Grazi will say something like, oh, no, he's got us all beat. And then, of course, we'll see some action figures from Mike later Dude, on. we all and have he, our super nerdy stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shit. But um, continue your Stephen King conversation. I'll pop back in later on. Sounds all cool. Right. I'll see you later. We'll try to figure out which one of our viewers will be taking our oh, luck. Mike is like a peeping Tom. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm leaving him off in the background. If he signs out, he signs out. <laughs> or I could kick him completely off. Should I Should I ban him from the studio? That's one of my options here, too. So, uh, yeah, man. Like, so Keanu Reeves, Stephen King's. I don't know if there's any other artist creators. Or... I, th I, think, I think there are. You know, um, one of the people that, um, that I love, absolutely love, uh, comes to mind, who is related to the... Uh, the new Bill and Ted movie, The Grim Reaper, Will Sadler. You yeah. know, you have a lot of actors that played um, lots of bit parts. And this happens. I don't think that this is like a current phenomenon. I think this happens in people's careers that they do so many bit parts. And then when they get into their, you know, 60s, 70s, they start to become a known quantity. Um, and I think Will Sadler is one of those people. So, like, for instance... Um, bit actor. He just got to these bigger roles. He plays the president in the Marvel Universe, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of out of nowhere for him. Uh, he was in that, that show uh, for five seconds. He was in the show. He's, uh, another local. He's another local. He lives in Hudson Valley. Yeah, he lives up in uh, up above the river, I think. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, on the other side of the river, I should say. And um, you know, so there's a lot of actors like that, too, that aren't necessarily... Like, he's worked consistently throughout the years. You know, he was in one of my favorite movies of all time, Demon Knight. Uh, yeah, he yeah. hasn't gotten a lot of leads other than that movie, which I think is a shame. Well, um, 30 years, his time's coming, you know? Like, I, you know, I, he was great in that movie. But he's, but you know what? He's great in a lot of other supporting roles, too. I mean, you know, you can't... He was the, uh, you know, the awesome bad guy in Hard to Kill. You know, he was the awesome bad guy in Die Hard, too. He was the Grim Reaper in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. You know, so um, it's nice to see that, too. But that happens with a lot of actors, too, with having, again, third and, and fourth wins as long as they keep working. Do you have any predictions, you know? you have any predictions for some uh, for some actors that might be coming back around? With uh, Trying to think, of, you know, the shame of it, the shame of it. When I went to um, when I went to school for uh, digital media, so film and digital media, um, I won't forget one of the uh, professors who was our age. Um, made a, a good point about Hollywood and their uh, made sure to point this out. I'm sorry, point out the fact that Hollywood does not use uh, actresses that are between whatever it is, 30 and like 50. So you only have a couple actresses that are over, over 50 that get work. But meanwhile, as soon as a woman turns 30, they basically stop getting used in movies. 35 or whatever the number, whatever the number is. So his, his, uh, his advice was if you want to make a movie with great actors, make a movie that's based around women that are in their forties and you will get grade A talent because no one else is writing movies for them. 
So those are the kind of actors that I think will be coming back around more, of, you know, actresses versus actors. I can't think of any particularly off my head right at this moment because yeah. all the roles go to, um, you know, Ellen. Um, um, why am I blanking on her name? The Iron Lady, most recently. Come on, you guys are are going to help me out on this one. The, the, it's right there. I know exactly who you're talking. The about. number one female actor. Someone no, someone's not going to write it here. I don't know. We got... No one's writing it in the things. Anyway, everyone knows Meryl Streep. Jesus Christ. Oh, All right. yeah, we got that. Yeah, Meryl Streep. Barbara just said it. it. And I said it as well. So there's lots of other actresses out there that deserve good I work. I thought you were going to say Shannon Elizabeth. Shannon Elizabeth also had her come up and come up and sing. So um, I don't um, know. Mel Gibson, they're coming out with a new lethal weapon. You think Mel Gibson gets another shot? Let me tell you, I don't. I haven't seen it, but I've heard nothing but awesome, awesome stuff about Dragged Across Concrete. I don't know if anyone's seen that. No, it's him and it's him and Vince Vaughn. So it's the guy who did Bone Tomahawk, which was great. If you haven't watched that, then he also did. Um, uh, the other one was another popular. Oh, uh, Brawl in Cell Block '99 mm -hmm. with Vince Vaughn. Very, the very violent, violent movies, and I think that's why people like them. But uh, Director Co Cross Concrete is, uh, I think, that director's newer movie, and supposedly that's a movie that helped Mel Gibson. I almost said Mel Brooks get back into uh, uh, career. Uh, but again, but you know, so he had all those anti-Semitic rants and and all the other crap that he went through, yeah. but. Again, he stopped working. It's not like he didn't have the money to stop. Yeah, to but I mean, he came back working. for a little bit and then just He did. Again. You know, I, I you know, I've always said this, you know, for me actors, I you know, I don't want them to be bad, you know, like bad people like, you know, Mel said the stuff that he said, but he's never made a bad movie in my opinion. No, you and know, that didn't that and, didn't and, you know, I'm he, sorry. No, I was going to say he just disappeared mostly because of what he said. People didn't want to be around, and they had to. He had to have that time to wait until it was okay to come back. But I, I, I hate it's, and it by no means is an approval of mm -hmm. what happened. What you know, how people act, mm -hmm. and excuse me, how they are in real life. But let me just put it to you in these terms: um, Thriller is a great song and a great video, and that's a great album. Yes. Anything that he did in his personal life, whether it's true or not, as reprehensible as some of the reprehensible as some of the uh, the rumors are, mm -hmm. that doesn't take away the fact that I still love Thriller. You know, I, the same with um, um, Jeffrey Jones, who went to jail for having pictures of kids on his on his computer. The father from Beetlejuice. Speaking of speaking of another actor who will not be getting a second wind, yeah. um, <laughs> but again, you know, you watch him and stuff like Howard the Duck, and and he was the principal in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? Yeah. There was Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby himself yeah. is a great stand-up act, even though he's a fucking scumbag. I'm sorry for cursing. Whoa, it's, okay. it's okay. I, uh, I wish I could have bleeped it, but uh, I'm sorry. I have a bleeper this right is, now. Whoops, is, sorry. Oh, hold on. Wait, Vinny, was Vinny, Vinny was like, I can't believe that didn't curse. <laughs> yeah, Vinny was like, I didn't know there was going to be cursing. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. I was adjusting. We want Vinny this is, up, so we get real edgy. Incredicon after dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop. Right. But anyway, my point is, is that to a certain extent, you have to be able to separate the art from the artist. Well, I agree look at with Robert you there. Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Good point. Yeah. Had a pretty sordid pass, and he's been quite quite forgiven by the public, and 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 his movies do very well. I think Mel's gonna get it. I think Mel's gonna get a big third act. Here's yeah. one, uh, Winona Ryder. Right, she's getting. Uh, yeah. Winona Ryder's getting a little yeah, bit of a little right now. That's a good one. I like that one. And of course, in Stranger Things, which is totally built on us being nostalgic, because like we Absolutely. watch it, we watch it for the era, we watch it for uh, the feel of the show. Um, yeah. You know who's a good act? Uh, actually, Barr put Robert Downey Jr. in there yeah. just, just as uh, just as that uh, um, we were saying that. So uh, you know who's a really good actress who's really had a good uh, renaissance lately is Laura Dern. Yeah, oh, yeah, 
Laura Dern, and she's fantastic. Um, she's been in bigger movies like Star Wars, but she's also been in a lot smaller stuff too. And uh, I think she's uh, she's gonna have a good second act. She's gonna have some good stuff coming up. Um, but I, you know, I don't know necessarily. Go ahead. But I was gonna say, but has she crested that period in time where they're not giving actresses? The work, you know, that she she yeah. has worked pretty consistently, but you know, again, now that she's getting into her third act of life, yeah, is that the reason why she's getting more work? It's like you go from being the sexy girl next door straight to the mother. Yeah, you know, there's nothing in between for a lot of actresses. Meanwhile, guys work. You know, look at someone like George Clooney. You know, like yeah. He's never not worked. You know, Brad Pitt has yeah. never not worked. You know, so it's like, it, how, about some, unfair, but, how about some directors? Some directors are, are, are popping back up. George Miller. Yeah. You know, so we've been seeing some yeah. uh, uh, Scorsese is, uh, did The Irishman on Netflix. Well, again, I think that they've had consistent careers, but it's like their Sam Raimi also comes to mind. You know, they're, they're, um, I don't know that they're reinventing themselves, but like Scorsese specifically with the Irishman, you know, that was a, that was a big leap going from the big screen to the small screen for a director like him. You know, can you imagine um, Quentin Tarantino doing a Netflix show? <laughs> he did a cut of uh, what's it called straight for Netflix, right? A cut yeah. of uh, Hateful Eight. Yeah, he did do that, right? That was a special cut. Yeah. So, I don't know if it was specifically for Netflix or not, but that was a big thing that they promoted. So that's something else too, is that now there are so many avenues to produce content mm -hmm. that you can easily have a second career. You know, yeah. it's not like back in the day where a story like Rodney Dangerfield was completely out of the question. You know, you have a guy who, Tried to be a comedian when he was in his twenties, failed miserably. Came back when he was in forty, when he was in his forties, and crushed it. You know, now it's like you could be a, a failed actor in a fail in a failed movie in your twenties and go straight to YouTube. You know, you can make your own movies for ten thousand yeah. dollars a pop and well, get. Yeah. It. I mean, that's, that's a subject for another day because we could talk about how like being able to be an independent creator is so different now than it was even ten years ago. Yeah, I was actually you can, talking to Mike about that on the phone earlier. It's so different. Yeah, you can spend uh, you can spend, uh, let's say, taking out a small like a car loan, right? Like you were going to spend twenty five thousand dollars on a car, let's say, uh, uh, rather an expensive car these days. Twenty five thousand dollars, you can buy enough equipment to make a serviceable movie if you yeah. get your friends to act in it and you get a good story and everything. Something like Clerks. Sure. As long as they can act. Oh, well, Clerks is the outlier. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it doesn't take even that back then because he had to buy a film camera and everything. Movies are shot on iPhones now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. They, they cool. shoot in HD. I mean, it, how, you know, that's all you need. And and it's, it, you know. I'm sorry. What were you saying, Vinny? He made Clerks on 10 grand. Yeah. I mean, and you could tell, but it's. Uh, and that was expensive yeah. for him. Yeah. He could do it. Now he could probably do that for like two grand. Yeah. But I mean, you, you can go on Amazon for a hundred bucks, two hundred dollars. You get green screen equipment, get with lighting gear and all that stuff. I mean, to have that, your iPhone, well, you can you can literally shoot a movie in you know in a room in your house. Yeah. Well, and, and, and talking and create, about you know, you and I mean and with some computer software, 3D, whatever it is, even using just basic after effects, you can Create a decent, a decent film, de decent animation, you know. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah, well, and that also too, like you know, back in the day when you had to spend, you know, whatever fifty grand on a camera for something even cheap, fifty grand. Yeah. Now, the three of us go to make a movie. All of us have an HD camera in our pocket, so you have three cameras now, so you can have all that coverage to yeah. do all you want, multiple takes. Uh, Greg Yozo just yeah, said, a, "Sup, sup." sup. Um, <laughs> Yo, dude. Yeah, and and on also Amazon, you could buy different type of equipment to use. I mean, you could buy a basic Steadicam for the iPhone specifically. You know, and you can you publish can... directly to Amazon. Yep, 
VOD. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's how, absolutely crazy. How is that not a franchise? They can sell you the camera. They can sell you the equipment. And <laughs> publish your movie. Soup to nuts, man. They got, you know, with the behemoth. Yeah. Anything you guys been watching? Anything uh, you wanted to share uh, that you've been finding interesting? I've been doing a lot of movies. Um, I don't know. I've been, I've been, well, kind of all over the place. Watching a lot of old stuff. Not, not much new stuff. Um, I did. Uh, I mentioned this Monday night. I watched Ragnarok on uh, Netflix. If you guys have seen that yet, um, okay. I kind of enjoyed it. I, what? I haven't seen it yet, but I have it on my queue. I. Thought the first two episodes were kind of slow moving, but after that it kind of kind of picked up, and it was. I, I'm looking forward more to season two. Season one was kind of a slow build. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Greg, Mike's on. Uh, Mike had some computer issues tonight, and he had some stuff to do. He might pop back in a little later. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I thought that was fun. Uh, I also mentioned I'm watching the Chef Show, which is I don't know if you guys saw the movie The Chef with John Favreau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He now has a show he put on Netflix. It's been like three seasons. Um, it's called The Chef Show, and him and and as uh, is, is the chef Roy something, the guy who taught him how to be the chef to look like the chef on the show in the movie. They're traveling to different things, trying different types of food. He's bringing their friends in. You know, there was a, a you know an Avengers. Uh, version, you know, where they were in Atlanta and they were talking with the Russo brothers and Robert Downey Jr. was there, Tom Holland, and I think one other actor, you know, and, you know, he brings in his friends and uh, John Favreau just, they just hang out, talk and cook and talk about yeah. food. It's, it's actually kind of cool, um, but I, I, I love cooking stuff, uh, you know, like cooking shows and things, so I'm finding that fun. Oh, uh, I should watch that. I love, I love uh, cooking shows too, especially yeah. things like, um, Oh man, we were addicted to Hell's Kitchen. Oh my yeah, god, I haven't watched that in a couple seasons, but yeah. well, that's the thing. I um, I'll go on Hulu and I'll watch like Kitchen Nightmares in the morning for an oh, hour. I love that show. Two. I mean, it, it's just fun. I love, I love all those <laughs> things. Um, so like I've I went back and my favorite uh, sci-fi I always said is Stargate. So I went back and I'll rewatch SG One a little bit. Um, well, I've never more... watched that. I, 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 I love Star, I love Stargate. I never watched the show though. The show SG One was good. Atlantis was okay, and I thought Universe was going in a really good direction, and it ended too early. You know? I didn't even realize there was a second and third <laughs> show. Yeah. Oh no no. <laughs> it's, 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 Our boy Samoa was uh, it's, yeah. came from that from that yeah, series. Yeah, yeah, oh. he was he was in Stargate Atlantis. It was a great you know that one was okay. I enjoyed it you know for what it was. Um, but I, I, I haven't passed season two. I just kind of leave it on the background. And like, if I fall asleep, I fall asleep. Um, I rewatched a little bit of Arrow because um, the beginning seasons were much better than what they did later on. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't realize I was watching. Uh, spoiler alert, everybody. If you haven't watched Arrow, shut it off now. <laughs> Is anyone still watching? Everyone shut off? Okay. Uh, I didn't realize that they killed off Black Canary. I was like, uh, which one? What? They've killed them all like six yeah. times. What's her name? Um, <laughs> They're all dead. The original yeah. Ruby from Supernatural. Oh, uh, she was David, on the show. David Cassidy. Yeah. yeah, David Cassidy's daughter. Daughter. Um, yeah. She was awesome on that show. Why no worry. They... She's got yeah. her own show now. It's called Legends Tomorrow. She plays the White Canary. No, that's that's uh, that's the first one. Oh, uh, okay. Colts or whatever. Colts. I don't know. Um, Greg asks if we've seen Tiger King yet. Have you guys seen Tiger King yet? Still yeah. haven't. Okay, I've watched it. I thought it. I, I don't get the hype about it. I was very like, what the hell am I watching throughout the whole thing? I won't give spoilers for you, uh, Ryan. But oh, dude, I, just, I don't care. You can't. It spoil was. It, it was <laughs> just. It was just bad. I was talking about it earlier with with some coworkers during a Zoom meeting today, like while we were BSing before the movie started. I mean, the meeting started, and I'm just like. Wow, I can because the guy put a background in Zoom of, of the Tiger King behind him, and I'm just like, <laughs> this Mark. this Mark. was Mark. just just bad. Oh yeah, Barbara put down Nick Cage TV yeah, Tiger I, King. I can't, I can't, I, I can't even want. And I love Nick Cage. I love his his bad overacting. And speaking I, of a Renaissance, yeah. Hey, the National Treasures were good movies. Oh, National Treasures, fantastic. Hey, listen, Nick Cage is a National Treasure. I'm not saying anything different. I like the one he did with um, Hellboy, Ron Perlman recently, Witch Hunt or something like that. Or I haven't the, seen that. 
No, I didn't see that one. Season of the Witch. It was Season of the Witch. That was a good movie. Okay. It was just scary enough where I was okay. He puts out some real stinkers, but then, yeah. you know, I could sit down and watch The Rock or Con Air, like, yeah. you know, bringing out the dead, speaking of Scorsese. Mm -hmm. Valley Girl, as Elizabeth Byrne just, just yeah. said. Mandy, Barbara, we just watched yeah. that. Great movie. Yeah. Uh, Vinny, what movies have you been watching? I just watched that new one that Helmsworth put on Netflix, Extraction. I, I want to see cool. that. I was looking for action movies, and it was really yeah. Cool. yeah. It's a, it's got a um a definitely a over um uh, Jason Bourne on Overdrive type of feel to okay. it. And but I think Ryan, what I think you'd like from it from a production standpoint is they have very interesting camera angles that they use. Like it's not a steady cam thing, but they shoot the action in a way where they make it feel like it's almost POV. It's hard to explain. It's almost it's almost like a video game where there's a floating camera around the action all the time. So let it, me let me let me say, was it like um, that scene in? I think a couple scenes actually in uh, Kingsman. Uh, yes, but like it, it's a little more, uh, it's a little less comical and a, and a little, a little more, bit more natural. Visceral. Yeah. It's visceral. The action in it, it's super violent. It's uh it's like his John Wick. It's like John Wick and Jason Bourne had a baby and it joined the IMF team and went on a mission with Ethan Hunt. It's you had me. You had <laughs> me at Jason Bourne. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely um, action. It's actually action porn. I would love it. And it was really well done. And I love Chris Humber. I'll watch Chris in anything. Speaking of action porn, we recently watched uh, an old movie. It's been around for five years or so, maybe. Maybe a little bit less. Um, yeah. Spectral. Oh, okay. I, mean, I haven't I, seen that. I didn't see it, but it's been it floats up on my recommends because yeah, I think Netflix just knows me. Okay, so so talking about movies having babies, imagine um, Predator had a baby with Poltergeist. There we go. All right, that's cool. All right. Uh, Greg, maybe not Poltergeist, something else. But yeah. and also, let me say, we have been watching, um, which is on probably I maybe right now or maybe later on. I'm not sure what time it's on, but um, what we do in the shadows on FX is in the second season. Right I now, I love that show. I, I have uh, the first three episodes. I think they've done there on my DVR. Yeah, the fourth because, one tonight, I think, because I was quarantined when they came out, so I couldn't watch them with my wife. So she's holding them. For me, so we got to sit down maybe this so, weekend. So, so yeah, interesting so. side note news. Mm. Phenomenal show. If you haven't seen the show, you need to watch it. You definitely need to watch the movie if you mm. haven't seen it. The director of the first movie and the producer of the show is Taika Watiki, mm. and he just got announced as being involved with the Star Wars movie. Yes. Yeah. He, well, he he uh, directed two episodes of The Mandalorian and was the voice of the one droid, uh, IG. And the voice of the droid. Yeah, yeah, and has done two Marvel movies. He did Ragnarok. Did he do another one? No, but he's was he's doing uh, Ragnarok. He's doing Thor four. Okay, he's doing Thor Thor four, and then he also plays that character in Thor. I can't remember what the character's name is. The big rock guy. The big rock guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is like describes like eight characters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but just just speaking of. Uh, of Star Wars real quick, you know, um, Greg said, saw the last uh, few Clone Wars that just came out. Not bad. Have you guys been watching? I, I haven't seen them yet. So I yeah, don't yeah. a very haunting uh, finale there. Uh, okay. leading to Revenge of the Sith. So, and, uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, Mandalorian season two is going to co-star Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano. Yes. And Clone Wars is really about Ahsoka Tano. That's her story. Michael, yeah. let me let me just tell you that any chance that Vinny yes, has to, to bring up Rosario Dawson, he does. I I, I get it. I, I I'm friends with Mike as well, who, ah, who does yes. the same thing. I think <laughs> me thinks great. they're in love. <laughs> Rosario Dawson, if you're watching, and you're not dating some super hunk from Hollywood, stay out of Orange County, New York. <laughs> <laughs> you are dating a super hunk, are you not? I'm sure she's got to be. She was in yeah, all she, the Marvel Netflix series. Yeah, no, she's in, she's involved with somebody very famous. Now I can't think of who it is. Someone will say it. No, yeah, I don't know who it is right either. I, I but I haven't really been following anything. You know, she does too much. It's not like she's my go-to. Uh, she's dating Cory Booker. Booker. 
Yes, the the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. Go Cory Booker. <laughs> Love that guy. I do. I really do. Okay, um, showstopper. Everybody, sorry. goodbye. <laughs> I was waiting for you to continue to go on. Right? Yeah, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> uh, nope, it's just that I love Cory Booker. He's a real sweet dude. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, Rosario, who also did the voice of Batgirl in the Lego Batman movie. Oh, uh, did was there a Batgirl show in the works at some point? I don't know. It looks like Mike's trying to come back in. I guess I'll let him in. Hold on. Oh, yes. He is a senator. Uh, huh? Thank you. He heard Mike heard Rosario Dawson and he had a Oh, <laughs> I want to just on time. You know what? I was just having this conversation about her. I'm sorry, Ryan. Continue your thought. <laughs> no, I was just going to thank Liz because she corrected me. Cory Booker is a senator now. Yeah. Yeah. My apologies. Yes. Yeah. I was a very lucky senator. I, I was saying, I was saying, <laughs> very lucky uh, senator. I just had this literal conversation about her. We were talking about conventions, and I and I've shared with all of you my uh, and I wasn't even at a convention. It was at another appearance that I uh, met Rosario at. But um, like I mean, I like I mean, we were cheek to cheek in the photograph, which is <laughs> wonderful. He'll pull it out and in a Mike, moment. He'll be like, "Here's the photo." Mike has not cleaned that cheek in two years. You're so absolutely got, right. See, he got up. He's getting the photo right now. There okay, we go. It, it hangs. It hangs on his nightstand, probably. <laughs> yes, it's his girlfriend is very jealous. I like how Mike. I like how Mike's basement set up like a comic con at all. <laughs> and he yes. has a booth. He's always just. How many times have you sold your kid a sketch? <laughs> well, listen, you know what you know talking about, and you know Grazi and I, I don't know if he shared with you we did, we did a really nice session today with some of my kids at school yeah I think we didn't talk about that but um oh, but cool. uh, I did I did um with my son him and I are working on a book together which is neat cool and I, and I, I encourage like everybody with your kids like go and go and do that stuff because this is now's the time and I know a couple other people have done that but but now is totally the time to be doing that really yeah. if you if you have a creative bone in your body, if you have a kid, or if you, if you don't have a kid and you want to just do your own thing, like now is, now is the time to do those things. Seriously. Uh oh, bad news, guys! I don't know if I can find this one. I can find this one photo. I'm all ready to give him the screen so you can make it nice and large. Bro. Talk amongst yourselves. So anything we were Rosario talking. Rosario Dawson will never replace me. Mike, did you did you have any? Give me the screen. Give me the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold said, on. You, would. you got the screen. Oh, bless your heart. Look at yeah. you. You're so young. And I clean. know, really. I, was, I, was I don't think I've ever oh. seen you smile so big in your life. Yeah, I, know, I think like, I see a little bit. I see a little bit of drool on the corner of your <laughs> mouth there too. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So there we go. Me and Rosario. It's Dawson. all been downhill oh. since then. Now, if I was like 20 and that happened, I would tell all my friends in Canada, "Yeah, this is my girlfriend." <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know her. She's an actress in the states. <laughs> you would tell them, "This is my girlfriend, eh?" This is my girlfriend, eh? Greg, no joke, huh? Thanks Stop being off. a knob. How's it going, eh? Take off. Good day. Good day. Take off. <laughs> Good day. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Lopez, since you're late to the game here, anything awesome. you wanted to talk about, nostalgia-wise, something that's giving uh, a product or an actor or a writer? Their second wind or third wind. We kind of went through a bunch of different guys. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! Like I listen. I mean, and my my soapbox for like the next week is going to be Scooby Doo. I mean, come on. Yeah. Not, well, not, that, not that it really needs a, another wind, but uh, what you call it? Um, I mean, it, it, I I want the movie to do well. That's what that's what I'm hoping for. I'll buy it for you. I, I already I already pre ordered it. I've got it on Voodoo. Well, speaking of pre-orders, um, Disney announced that they're going to be releasing New Mutants on VOD. Is that 100%? Yeah. Because I saw, I was looking at that. I know you messaged us earlier about it, but then yeah. I looked online to um, see, and because there's, it's been, I guess it's been popping back and forth on Amazon Prime. So, yeah, I think they're definitely going to do it. I know that they might as well at this point. There's been a lot of controversy with Universal and AMC and Regal, and now they've backed off on those threats about not, uh, you know, because. When Universal, when Universal put Trolls out on VOD, AMC yeah. got pissed, and then Regal jumped on that bag wagon. But here's the deal: they, they didn't get mad at Disney for releasing Onward. Yeah, well, I'd be Onward already had a small, I had a very small window, and that was the last theater I saw. Me and my son went to go see that, and that was yeah. the last. That was like the last room we saw. 
Yeah, I, just, I think a lot of it has to do with, it's not about when movie theaters will open, it's gonna be, how do we know what people's reactions are gonna to be to, to, to visiting theaters? And I think a lot of studio executives are having those conversations in, do we hold these products back? Um, I know Marvel has to be sweating because their stuff's all about timing. Those movies well, are all- Well, I mean, and also, I mean, Marvel slash Disney because like that's that's what's gonna save Disney is when these movies come out like really yeah and they have Mulan and and Black Widow those are the two big ones and they coordinate that with the TV series so like yeah you know are they gonna now do they, do they have to wait on Falcon and Winter Soldier because a lot of these things lead into each other so now that you, you know think you think Black, Black Widow's leading into – well, I mean, they weren't – I think from what I read, the only show that was relatively close, I think, to being done was WandaVision. Uh, the Soldier's coming out first. Yeah, but I, but I think production-wise, WandaVision was done – was pretty much all set. Oh, okay. It, it may be. You might be right. You might be right. So, um, and I, I – and I, but I, I know what you're saying. It's like, are they going to release these things? Or I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean – Listen, I, I don't want to watch. I don't want to watch Ghostbusters Afterlife on the TV. I want to see that in a the theater. Come on, everybody loves the big screen, but there definitely is going to be a quantifiable change when movies start to do a direct to VOD. Um, it, it might, it, there might be a world where we see it. That Trolls did very well. Yeah, and I'm sure. And honestly, I'm sure Scooby's going to do well. From what I read, Trolls, Trolls made nearly the same amount of money as the first one did. Okay. And I mean, well, that's, that's because before video sales and before like DVDs and Blu-rays and all that stuff. Also, you have to remember that if it's a person's only choice, th that's it. You know, if you have to see it on VOD, you're going to see it on VOD. Yeah. You know, people won't avoid it. Um, yeah. pre preference or not, you know, so. Yeah, and, you know, and I think that definitely, you know, the video, the theater experience is going to evolve after this. Um, of course. Yeah, we were talking about this last yeah. week. But it, it'll definitely not be, I don't think there'll be a complete loss of movie theaters, but I do see the giant multiplexes going away. Yeah. That's going to be, like we said last week, it's going to either be the niche market where people are going and they're spending considerably more money to see something on the big screen um, or going to like stadium events to watch movies with 20,000 other people, which is well, very, <laughs> no, I could see that being very feasible, you know, people again. Okay. So I go and see um, uh, someone like uh, we went to go see fishbone a couple of years ago and they were in a small theater, a couple hundred people. We would also go and see, um, you know, the Rolling Stones, let's say, in a theater, in a giant coliseum. And people will do it if it's at, if it's available. It's just going to change the way people consume media, yeah. you know. Greg Yozo just wrote here. He said, charge 15 bucks for a one-time shot for Black Widow on Disney Plus. Say, make I'd, pay 30. I'd pay 30 bucks. Well, what, what they still have pay-per-view, right? So yeah. basically you're just going back to a pay-per-view system. You gotta but, think but, but so here's here's the deal. So so and I, we're going back to this theater thing that we talked yeah. about this week. So let let's just take let's let we let's let's use Black Widow. All right, because that's that's something that that's very very much relevant. Um, so like we said, pay per view or like Greg said, charge charge fifteen or Vinny said thirty bucks um, to watch it on Disney Plus. Like are you at this? Listen, at this point now, we're already waiting. Right, so if Disney says, "Hey, you know what? We're going to release Black Widow," they could use it to sell the app. No, they absolutely could use it to sell the app. But let's say they say, "You know what? We're gonna we're gonna do something for for Black Widow, and you know it's gonna be X, Y, and Z." Um, what's going to stop most people at this point now from like, you know, what? we've already waited like a month, so I'll wait another two or three months when they're not doing this deal, and it's gonna be on Disney Plus anyways. You know what well, I'm think, saying? Think about this too. It's very easy to pirate a movie on your own television rather wow. than pirating it at home or at the, the theater. Yeah. See, so so I, could, I could easily rent it, set my video camera up to shoot the TV, and then just send you guys the file. Well, they watch it. it too. See, so I mean, there's, there's a lot of if factors. I mean, I think, 
unlike like Trolls just went right to rental. And there's a couple of other movies that are going right to rental. Um, but I think I think Scooby has has the good model because they're doing it's twenty bucks. Twenty bucks to rent it for forty eight hours or you pay twenty five dollars and you can own it. So I, I whatever, I paid the extra five bucks, I'll I bought it. I'm like, whatever. We'll yeah, watch right. it for once. Yeah. Well, the thing about it, you know, uh, I, I have a family of seven. So at any given time, there's four to seven of us going to the movies, you know, depending wow. on where you take your home, you know. So it's a hundred dollar a day for me just to get in the door. Yeah. And then, right. So you just you just went from a hundred dollars to twenty dollars. Right. So like that's why I'm saying like I think they can charge that. I think they can charge thirty bucks because there's a lot of people. That's why these movies do so well because they're family movies. You know they. Oh, that's why they're doing that, yeah. Right, right. I mean, there's never it's it's very rarely one or two people that go to see these movies. It's groups are four or five. Yeah, I mean, like Sp Paramount's holding off to August for SpongeBob. That was supposed to come out the week after Scooby. Yeah. So I mean, they're holding out all hope because I mean, listen, that's going to be the other thing. Maybe Scooby Scooby's going to open up the eyes for Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers is going to have the really the big thoughts about Wonder Woman now too. The, absolutely and it's going to be based on i think that's why they pushed i think universal was smart when they were like we're just doing fast and the furious next year because now they'll get a good idea of like it, are people going to go back to what are the people's confidence levels when they're allowed to go back to these group settings is it is it we don't know until it happens well, well, the only come ghostbusters from columbia like they that's a movie that they know people are going to come out and droves to watch yeah another thing though too is that um, you know, I'm the president of whatever NBC. I'm the I'm the president of Universal. Am I going to take more money now and put it into my television series and television properties versus movies? You know, uh, is there? You know, that's going to be part of this too. Is that there's going to be a shift in interest? You know, maybe some people. You know, so there's. You guys like going to the movies. I, I like going to the movies, even though I don't go to the movies that much anymore. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are just on the they're just on the bubble with it. You know, they could probably never go to a movie again and be completely fine. I'm one of those people. I'll be honest with you. I can you can just put everything on my TV and I'm happy. Yeah, you I'm know? I'm kind of there too. I mean, I still like the experience, but yeah. yeah, my my wife and I we pay I forget how much it is a month, but we're you know, we have like passes to the Alamo. We can go every day to the Alamo theater if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And we don't use it like, you know, like, oh, we can see every single movie that's out and go to a movie every couple of days if we wanted to after work. But we don't we don't spend the money on that. We, we're paying and we'll go maybe once a month. This reminds me of something from my childhood. And Vinny can relate to this right now because he just put in a pool and he has a family. I remember when my father put a pool in the backyard, little pool, you know, not, or not, I'm sorry, not when we were in the city. We had a tiny pool when we were in the city. When we were up here, he put in a reasonable sized pool. And uh, that was always his thing about us going to the beach or whatever. It was like, well, we have a pool in the back, backyard. Why do you want to go to the, to the beach? And I would say the same argument now. It's like, I pay for Netflix and Disney Plus and this and that and the other thing. Why do you kids want to go to the movies? Just watch what's on TV and, you know. Yeah, and be happy. <laughs> I, I love the movie theater experience. I love the movie. there's there's something about it. It's the only time Absolutely. in the world where you you know you don't you know you don't pick up your phone. You're actually engaged. Some people do. What's going on. Oh, well, now 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 everyone knows how Broadway feels and how people mm -hmm. that you know that like plays and the opera feel. You know, all the people that like the movies that you know now now you can't go. Is the mm -hmm. same with everyone, all the stage actors that are like, why are nobody coming and seeing plays? It's just the interest change. Yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, well, Broadway's going to take a huge hit from this. But oh, I got Broadway's hurt. So, so do yeah. you miss... So for me, I miss seeing these movies that have been delayed more than I miss going to the movies. Does that make no, sense? No, no, no. I, I miss, oh, I miss all things. Because even like Grazi was... I have that Regal Unlimited thing. And like I, I listen. I will go see S H I T just because I I pay for it. And but but oh, you, we established you can curse. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, Xeniel <laughs> as what? No. <laughs> um, That's but, right. Oh. Come to our show where we can curse. <laughs> we get very blue on our shows. Let me tell you. 
family friendly. <laughs> um, whatever. No, we're and listen, we can, we can, we can. We, that's why we're on at night. But no, um, I apologize I, for my past digressions. That's okay. I have the regal thing, and like I, I, the the cool thing, like Grazi was saying, though, you pay what I pay twenty three dollars a month, and I can go see any movie. So I can I can go and see something, and if it's disappointing to me. I didn't waste my money, or if it's something that I saw, I'm like, "Wow, this is awesome!" You know, like it, it, it gives me the chance to see other other flicks. That well, I wouldn't. I, so this is see. the thing. This is the thing too. Like, so most recently, we went to go see. Um, we went to go see Doctor Sleep. Most recently, that was the most recent movie that we we saw in the theaters because really Stephen King and Joe Hill fans, right? So, um, when we were sitting there watching it. I got no extra entertainment out of watching it with that crowd, you know, but I did get extra entertainment out of going to the Alamo and watching a 35 millimeter print of Fright Night, which is one of my favorite movies from 1985, because all the other people in the theater were also huge Fright Night. When me and Vinny went to go see um, Monster Squad that was hosted by some of the stars of Monster Squad, that was worth going and interacting with people. Going yeah. and seeing Star Wars in the movies, whatever. You well, know? I mean, I, same thing. Like, um, I saw back in Jan, was it that January or December? I mean, I know we talked about this. I saw a reboot in the theaters, and everybody that was there were Kevin Smith and Jay and Bob fans. And it was like, like, so even if you weren't a, if, if you watched it with somebody that wasn't a fan, then you'd be like, oh, so, so, like, and you guys have all seen the movie at this point now. Right. But sitting in there and, you know, Banky comes on there or Holden comes on there, it's like, oh, you know, it was it was that experience being with that crowd. Yeah, so so I, that, that's what I've been saying about the, the niche market. That's not going to go away. I mean, they might change it. You might have to sit in your own little bubble, breathing your own air if you can't be six feet next to someone. You know, they might have cars literally like a drive-in inside where you're in a car in a building. I mean, what I, I, have a really big TV. I have a really big TV at home. I have a very comfortable couch. I have a really good sound system. I don't necessarily, I like the big theater effect, but it's not a lot to keep me. You don't have to get dressed, dude. You can sit there in your underwear and watch yeah. television. It's great. I do. I'm right now. I'm in let's my play, underwear. Let's play, let's play, let's play a little devil's advocate. So, um, another great Keanu Reeves movie. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's a different no, it wasn't a great movie. It was just another Keanu Reeves movie. So uh, Disney Plus has 50 million subscribers right now. Yes. If they put Black Widow out and say, hey, you have to pay 25 bucks. On to top of your subscription? On top of your subscription. Like Greg said, yeah. Um, say 50% of those. See it. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. I don't, I don't think they would do something like that. People, I, I think the, they'll wait. They'll wait. No, they will, but I think the Disney people, the people who are Disney geeks and stuff, and they're paying for a service. They're like, we're already paying for your service. Why are we going to pay more money to watch a show on this service already when you should be giving well, it to us for free? To a, a, a month to later, it'll be on there for free. To, to a company that is infamous for price gouging and, yeah. mm -hmm. hey. and charging for everything. Family friendly. <laughs> so, but that... But no, then, but I, that, that is, I think I think you have a good point, but I think those people weren't going to the theaters anyway. Those are the same. They weren't. This is, has nothing to do with VOD. They weren't. They weren't going to go see Endgame. They were going to wait for Endgame to come out on Disney Plus. Yeah, but I'm you know I'm one of these people where I listen. I saw Endgame in the theaters, loved it. Um, I've, I've probably watched it about three times on on uh, Disney Plus now, um, but I don't know if I would pay. For Black Widow, if you're telling me just give me an extra twenty five dollars, I'm like, no, I'll wait because it's it's a it's a service you should be providing me anyway. And it'll be on there eventually. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with Netflix. If Netflix said, hey, we're putting something on, pay us an extra ten bucks, would you pay the extra ten bucks for it? I mean, no. Put your your job is 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 literally video on demand. Yeah. And and if I want to watch something. I should just be able to go click it and well okay so so now that brings up a good point of how um the industry changes mm -hmm. what if netflix or disney plus or whatever mm -hmm. uh amazon prime what if they had a, a pay-per-view channel as well 
Well, that's what I was wondering is with New Mutants, is that what they're doing with New Mutants? Or is that just going to, if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch New Mutants? No, I think you have to buy it. You, no, you, you may have to you may have to pay for it. but Amazon already does that. Amazon has their free stuff. They do. And then they have pay yeah. for this. And, and they very them. they very frustratingly mix it together. Yes. yes. On screen. Yeah. Which is extremely frustrating. Now, yeah. if it was Netflix and then Netflix PPV, you know, or yeah. however they want to, to market it, and you could just have that app separate. And do you know and and rent a movie for well, whatever just, it is forty eight hours? That would work. That's how, it, that's how it is with um Voodoo and movies. Well, Voodoo, I don't, I don't know about movies. I have both of them because uh, Voodoo and movies anywhere. Those are like the little codes that you get when you buy well, it. So Trolls Tro 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 World Tour, Trolls World Tour has made more money over three weeks of digital release mm -hmm. than the original Trolls did. During five months in a theatrical release. Now, wow. but listen, but listen, mm -hmm. all of those people are stuck at home with their Correct. children. You're right. So let's see. So that about. has to promote sales as well. I concur. I agree. So there, there is. So there is a, a little bit of a caveat there with how much money they made, because again, like you were saying, Vin, not but, only are you paying for tickets to go out with the whole family, you're paying for gas, you're probably having dinner before or after the movie, you're paying for popcorn and everything else. $100 is probably a modest amount to go with a family of five out for the evening. But to go back to Gracia's point, you know that World Tour is eventually going to be on Netflix in four months. So, and, and is this popularity going to affect the people that potentially would have bought the Blu-ray or DVD in the future because they're like, ah, well, we didn't see the movie in the theater, so I feel that spending $20 on a DVD is justified. If they've I seen the movie know. already, I they just gonna... buy it. Uh, but I, I think, I think, you know, if you have something like, you know, Vinny was saying, uh, and, and Ryan, the, the thing is, right now, we're stuck at home. Yeah. You're going to spend the money, and I don't want to say this kind of wrong, but if you can, if you can spend 20 bucks, to basically shut up a kid for 90 minutes, <laughs> you're going to do that. Or just you know? have a little something yeah. special. Like we exactly. break up the fifth Friday night in a row that we haven't been able to go anywhere. But oh these, no, I but totally these, I totally agree. And I would I would totally buy well, and I'm I'm a physical media person. Yeah. I like buying physical media. Yeah. I'm buying you know, I'm buy it again. So yeah. so yeah, I actually like I would buy the DVD and throw it at the kids and be like, here, because I know they're gonna watch it and memorize it a billion times because that's yeah. what I did when I was a kid. But what I'm saying is a lot of those people who paid for trolls right now may not have actually said we're gonna go to the movies and take their kids to the movies for whatever, whether it's cost, whether it's just something oh, yeah. they don't do normally. That's the point, right. That's the point yeah. I was making before yeah, is yeah. that how much is just because they're there. Yeah, right. exactly. And you know and I think I think that's why you know, trolls did so well. We definitely, we definitely need to have uh, a couple, a bigger sample base of this. But I yeah. do think, well, I Scooby, will be, Scooby will be test number two. Have you seen Greg's uh, yeah, comment here? I post pay that a, to the screen. Yes. Here, I'll post Greg's. Yes. I pay a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars to shut you kids up for an hour. <laughs> and I'm sure, based on that comment, he probably has an upper limit. It might even be 200, 300, <laughs> or 500, depending on what's going on. Uh, but but how his day has been going, what holiday it is. See, now, so here's the other thing, too, and I think the studios are aware of this, whether it be Disney, whether it be Warner Brothers or Universal. So Fast and the Furious next summer, Ghostbusters, March, right? So remember... There, if if they if if they do video on demand now, right? Mm -hmm. Realistically, they don't have content for next summer. They yeah. they 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 are no movies being made right now. There are no. I mean, we are gonna we're gonna run out. Like I think tonight tonight was Riverdale's last thing. Flash mm -hmm. is like three episodes behind, but they're next. I think next week is their season finale, or you know, and they're just cutting things short. Walking Dead was like in the middle of their season finale. Same and they, thing with uh, Supernatural. Who knows when that, they, they still have like three episodes to shoot, I think. Yeah, so, and a lot of, so shows, movies, like we're going to be out of content. I don't want to say very soon, 
But, oh my God, content but, is going to be like let, toilet paper. No, let me. I, I'm going to say this. You know, you know. Think back to when we had the writer strike and we got all the reality TV BS. We're not you even know, gonna that. But no. <laughs> but there was a way. We had the writer strike. What they do? They said we're going to throw reality TV. You know, right now we can't make films. We can't do a lot of production. Um, Anime. Work. Yeah, well, animation can be done at home. I mean, I have my yeah. Cintiq right here. I have Toon Boom Harmony on my computer. Someone can call me up and ask me to animate something for them, and I can literally do that in my house. Well, that's what happened. That's what happened with Scooby. They finished up animation at people's homes, yeah, and that's because you know we all have the software home, and we could, you know, we could do that. Uh, so animation, I think, WWE has has, has, has no problem. Um, well, let me but, let me ask let me ask you guys this from your own yeah. personal history, because I know that I used to. My biggest movie theater days was when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, and then when I was like in my twenties, mm -hmm. and I would go out with bigger groups of people. Yes. Is is that the same with you guys? Mine were late teens, early twenties, like later high school, you know, college time this is when I really went out uh, to the theaters. Right. So, and what about Mike and Vinny? You guys like the same way you used to go out with big groups of friends and stuff it, i mean usually it's just me and girlfriend or my son but or or i go by myself because i just i enjoy the again i enjoy the movie no no, no i'm not I'm, I'm saying back when you were younger when we oh, were yeah. like of course of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. right so uh, and Vinny, i would assume the same thing when you were 18 i uh i don't like sharing my popcorn man so i would <laughs> actually you never you never cut the hole in the bottom of the pop. No, forget it. Oh. Um, Go, going to the movies is very similar to like it's one of those things where it's like um, it's a it's a tribal thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, my, what I was getting at was, and that what you're saying, Vinny, is like, um, kids, you know, like, mm -hmm. like I know every time I'm an old man, right? So every time I go to see like Star Wars or something, there's a bunch of kids. I'm like freaking kids, you know. <laughs> Yeah, being no, loud like, and everything, but like that's a that was a big thing for us when we were kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're going to get affected pretty heavily by this. That yeah. was like one of the only things you could do when you were a kid. Yeah, it's one of my it's one of our traditions. Like my boys and I, we, we love going to the movies together. We see all the big movies, and um, we definitely like to see a lot of stuff that's a little more nuanced and indie too. I like I like I like the art of film and filmmaking. So mm -hmm. I saw movies that were interesting. I'd like to share that with them. You know, obviously, you know, uh, content beware. But we like, would go up to Rhinebeck and watch snooty French films. <laughs> no, but about Vinny, the flower. Never. <laughs> I remember, like two years ago, you and I had a conversation, Vinny, and you you couldn't have said it actually better. Again, talking about like movies and stuff. Um, we were talking about Solo. And at the time, everybody was crying about uh, whatever the actor's name is. Like, see, there goes Ryan already. See, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And and but I, I I like Solo. I thought Solo was a cool flick. And and, and Vinny, you and I remember you said, okay. and you I'm with you, Ryan. This is this is the truth, though. Is that you said you looked at your son? Yeah. And your son didn't give a rat's ass who the actor was nope. or whatever. It was Han Solo. And to, to your son, it was Han Solo. It was a Star Wars flick, and he was having a ball. Yep. He, was yeah, he was not precious about Harrison Ford. It was for Tyler, actually. And he was, you know, nine, eight, nine at the time. And he, it was the only, we go to all these moves, movies all the time. And he, like, literally, like, grabbed my hand. He was like, I really like this movie. Like, he said that to me out loud. He's like, and it was, like, during the Kessel Run, and everything was going crazy. And I was and like, Vinny was like, I know. You. <laughs> and uh, I was just like, oh, he doesn't give a crap who Harrison Ford is. He has no care in the world about Mark Hamill or any of these people. That's not. Yeah, I think that I think that most of us have grown out of that fanboyness. Like we were talking about last week about like uh, you know Idris Elba being 007. Even though oh my god he's black and how can 007 be black? Nobody cares. You know anybody that is gonna go nobody cares. Well, you know, it doesn't matter who. She's got to be British. Yeah, but even even like I was reading. Well, was, yeah, okay. He does have to be or have a good British accent. That's fine. I was online today and they and you know of course they're pumping out the advertisements for Scoop and on my feed I'm getting all the advertisements for Scoop since I'm following it right. Ooh, and I don't want to tell you what advertisements I get. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just reading the comments, and they're talking about what is it? Is it Zach Efron, Jason Isaacs, Wolf Forte, Amanda Seyfried, 
Ken Jong. And, and listen, I mean, would I prefer all the voices that we know? Yes. But and and of course, all the of all the people commenting in this in this feed are all people like our age. Oh, I can't believe. And you know, absolutely, I think Matthew Willard should have been Shaggy in this one hundred percent. But to my seven year old son, he he could care really, it's Scooby and Shaggy in a movie. Yeah. That's, oh yeah. That's it. That's it. Yep. You know, hear the voices. It's okay to like a movie, and it's okay to not like a movie. You mm-hmm. know, it just is what it is. For some movies, just don't work for some people, and regardless of of the reasons, and some people. You know, you just like something like I can. I, Ryan and I joke all the time. Like, we go through our filmographies of movies that we like, and I'll sit and defend like movies that are constantly bashed, like Speed Racer. Speed Racer, uh-huh. is a and Speed I'll, is a great movie. And I'll like, throw out stuff. Movie? Speed Racer is a great movie. I'll stand behind that movie. And I'll throw out stuff like Heath Ledger was a terrible Joker. I agree with you on that. I agree. You must burn. I. We, yeah, we but come, like we discussed that before. <laughs> oh, we yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I like terrible movies. Like I really, really like terrible movies. I still like Police Academy. I, you know what? I tried up until it. they went to Russia. I tried watching yeah, it. Again. Last one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually tried revisiting Police Academy, and it was it was tough to get through it. I'm not gonna lie. Police Academy. There, was tough. Well, there's a I certain. It's like try. You know what? Sit down. This is one you can sit down. Sit down and try to watch Porky's nowadays. Oh, yeah, really? right. I do or meat meatballs. I love yeah. I love Bill Murray, but try yeah. sit down and watch meatballs. It's but that like, was a terrible movie. Even it they, was they, a terrible they, movie. Right. Ready for the summer, <laughs> <laughs> Caddyshack. Caddyshack. We were just talking about that, my wife and I, and yo, Caddyshack. Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. He's in that movie for like five minutes and steals it. What about back he's to school? Just, that whole, oh, uh, I love yeah, Back to School. Back to School holds up. Fletch, Fletch, Fletch one holds up. Oh, yeah. My my dirty dark secret that I've never oh. seen Fletch. You never saw oh, Fletch. Really? I know me, right? I haven't seen Fletch or wow. Fletch lived. That seems like a, a Ryan Khaki movie if I ever thought of one. That's I know, a- and I've heard that a lot, but I have seen Spies Like Us, and it did leave me with a seven foot high orange afro. <laughs> Spies well, like Us is yeah. one. There's some good parts about it, but that's a tough watch. Which one? Uh, Spies Like Us. It's a tough watch. You know, yeah, no, I agree. I I picked that. I got it. Like I I found it for like a dollar, like at the flea market. I was like, all right, cool. I can I can handle some Dan Aykroyd and Chevy Chase. And yeah, it it, it it's not as good as I remember it when I was younger. Well, and uh, and the same thing. Well, the same Kenny thing. Said, not armed and Dangerous. That was a great flick. With uh, oh, Armed and Dangerous. Yeah. Actually, Kenny Mendoza oh. just mentioned John Candy. I, I can watch anything. John yeah, Candy. I have to agree with you. Great Outdoors. Yeah. Oh, my God. The Great Outdoors. We just watched The Great Outdoors, and mm-hmm. I should have gold brick. Oh, see, I cursed again. I'm sorry. That's a, <laughs> that's a line from the movie, though. Um, I'll blow it out your ass. <laughs> Roman. The Great Outdoors is the first movie I can remember as a kid laughing so hard that I actually cried. Like, Which one? Great Outdoors? We saw that in the theaters, and I was just peeing my pants. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, I like I look like there's there's a couple of t- like Office Space. We went to go see Office yeah. Space in the uh, theater. For me, that well. Oh my god! I remember literally falling out of the chair, laughing into the aisle. Yeah, but that that's a movie that doesn't hold up. Yeah. Oh, oh I totally space, does. I can't, I can't watch it these days. I loved it when it came out. Yeah, I oh saw it in god, the theater. I love it. I I've I had it on on. I think I even had it on VHS. That's how old it is. Really, right? but not. Um, but I wouldn't. I, it's I very definitely popular for a while. I brought it up, mm-hmm. but not to the. It's it, it can't hold a candle to um, mm-hmm. things like uh, like Great Outdoors, right? Um, Who's Harry mm-hmm. Crumb is a movie yeah, that I haven't good. watched oh. in a long time. That was very funny. Yeah. yeah. Summer Greg, Rental. Uh, Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck's a here's, here's a great oh, Uncle Buck. When he said, "Oh, my cousin, our, uh, my Blue Heaven," absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And Uncle Buck. When he tells Macaulay Culkin, when he's giving him the birthday breakfast, uh-huh. and he says, you should see the toast. I couldn't even fit it through the door. I have to shut it off because I laugh so hard. <laughs> you should see the toast. Oh, my God. He was taken. So he's another one. This is what I was – we were talking about this, I think, last last week. He's another one that didn't live long enough, live long enough to do serious roles. Like he did a couple yeah. serious well, he did, roles. He did a couple of little ones here. He did there. a couple, but he's like like he's he would have been in that Tom Hanks 
That was a tough category. category. That was a tough loss, man. We missed out on a lot of and good you know, we, we talked to Scott. Our kids, our kids left out. Yeah. We got a lot of it. Yeah. You know, it's the, the um, kids now that lost out. Yeah. yeah. Young Frankenstein's another one that I can't stop laughing every time I see Yeah. It. Just you do, don't open this door. Tommy Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like looking over here, right? Because I got a lot of yeah. great. He, like, we got a. I, I was a huge SETV fan. Yeah. Um, Thanks to my parents. They were huge SCTV fans as well. And that's where I first met John Candy. And uh, and all of them. Joe Flaherty. Sorry. And, um, I didn't mean to put that up. That's okay. That's a good oh. question, though. That's a good question. Yeah, no, I, it is. I was going to get to it, and I accidentally clicked. Yes, Camp Candy. Camp well, Candy. Well, Camp Candy. well just and if, if people want to go back and look at our interview with Scott Shaw... We we actually spent a good amount of time talking with Scott because Scott worked he he designed John Candy for Camp Candy so he knew, he knew him and yeah. everything and he he told us and you and again you can go back and watch it's probably like an hour into the interview yeah. our interview but um, Scott was telling us yeah um, John Candy's a cartoon um, everything that that you saw on screen of him yeah. was one hundred percent and like a tough loss like I mean to this day people still. I like so upset about it because yeah. it was like 100% genuine. And, and Scott said, I believe he said, if you want to know what John Candy was real like in real life, watch, I think it was cool runnings. He said, he goes, that yeah. is the closest to how he really was as an actual person. Uh, what a, what a, what a great man. Maybe we'll put that back up. We'll, we'll, we'll tag that out. Yeah, we'll we'll that out. Although if I, if I do recall, I think he was a little bit more svelte in camp candy than he was in real life no 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 no, no. If scott tells uh, we're not gonna ruin we're not gonna say yeah. i'm not sorry watch scott's story because scott tells you the evolution of how he drew john and what john decided on so it, yeah. it's a, it's a cool story so go back and watch it that we'll, also, we'll link that out that also just brought to mind life with louie <sighs> that was a good Louis anderson uh. nah, i'm louie anderson there was I a lot of him. cartoons that comedians had yeah. when we were kids. Um, Bobby's World. That, Bobby's, Bobby's World. World. Yeah, that was the thing that was like that could happen. Uh, does that happen anymore? Uh, I don't. Cartoons. Not really. really. Kevin Hart doesn't have a cartoon. Not yet. <laughs> well, maybe after today. <laughs> well, the last one I remember. The last one I remember was. Um, was when Eddie Murphy got uh, the PJs, right? Like that wasn't a cartoon, but. No, I'm talking about yeah. breakfast cereal cartoon. That was, that was well, that was a cartoon. The PJs. It was a claymation. It was yeah. Uh, stop motion. But that was the last time I remember a major comedian. Although at that point he was a movie star. You know, was that I mean, Eddie Murphy? I don't remember if that was Eddie Murphy. Yeah, it was Eddie Murphy. Murphy. It was Eddie Murphy. Okay. And a lot of a lot of talented actors who did yeah. the voices. That was a star-studded cast, and it got. I, I don't think it lasted for more than a season. Even. Well, that was that was the time where the Simpsons were hot. And yeah. then everybody and Fox was. And this is obviously pre Family Guy, um, and even pre Futurama. Fox knew The Simpsons was a hot thing, and I, I want to even say this. It may PJ's may have started around the same time as King of the Hill, but it just didn't catch on. It was a Fox show, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a Fox yeah, yeah. show. Like all the networks, like so, Simpsons were hot. So uh, I maybe, say it about I say it about Fox all the time. Fox might have terrible news, but man, they have great like. Programming, entertainment yeah. programming, X Files. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. That's what you're. It's, well, <laughs> at, at that time, at that time period, just a quick little thing. So there was there like all the major networks were like we're going to do animation. So CBS did um with with Hanna Barbera did um the show called Fish Police, which was based off of a comic Ooh. book. Um, yes. John Fish and John Ritter, John Ritter, they did like six episodes. John Ritter was the uh, the the main character in that. Over on oh, NBC, please. they took the uh, they took the cartoon from Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories, Family Dog. Which Family Dog. Made, they that maybe ran six to eight episodes, and then over on ABC, they did uh, also with Hanna Barbera a show called Capital Critters, which was um, Neil Patrick Harris, Harris. Bobcat Goldthwait. And uh, our our buddy Charlie Adler, um, and it was about it was about um, these rats and roaches that lived in the White House during the Bush and Quail era. And yeah, actually, Charlie Adler a little bit. I liked I it too. 
Yeah. One of my favorite voice actors, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Shall we tell the story a quick? It's not try? even fun. You turn it oh, into something that it's, it's not. Even fun. So, so, and and, oh. and, like, <laughs> and me, me, me and my me and my girlfriend communicate with Charlie Adler all the time. But uh, so we, we we did a show with Charlie, with Charlie Adler, and I mean we, we we became like fast friends with him very quickly. And so we're over there BSing. I, I and I said, Grazi, I'm like, come over and meet because I know. We're, we all like the cartoon voice. So Grazia, come on over to meet Charlie Adler. And he, I mean, he follow his Twitter feed. He is he is truly just like a funny guy, a super yeah. super funny guy, um, yeah. and, such a, and such a nice guy. So so, and and on and on. And so Grazia goes, oh, do you mind if I take a picture? He's like, oh, do you mind if I grab my balls? <laughs> As long as Mike didn't say, "Do you mind if I grab your?" I didn't. I, I, I forget what I said. I said something. You know, you, 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 were, you were just like, well, we didn't know what to say. No, I forgot what I said, but it wasn't. I, I think I told him that's fine. Just don't touch mine or something. <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but I was like, okay. Grazia, uh, Kenny Mendoza has a really good question. Who would play John Candy in a biopic? Whoa, that's uh, ooh. I don't know. Will Chris Sack? Farley. Oh, too soon. Too soon. I, I too really no. don't know. You could do a Chris biopic of Chris Farley, too. Come on. He had a story. Chris Farley, he was the one that we were saying last week, too. Would, I was saying that would, he's a, he was another loss that uh, we didn't get to see him in serious roles. I think he would have crushed it, too. Will, Will yeah, Sasso. No, I, I, Will Sasso. I, what about Will Sasso? Will, yeah, he could totally do it. I wasn't even thinking of him, but yeah, he, he could. could but I don't. I think that there's someone else out there. Yeah, well, I'm even thinking like, does it have to be somebody that is? It's nobody famous. No, no, no. It, I'm saying it doesn't have to be. I mean, like, there, there's makeup and stuff. Like, I mean, it doesn't necessarily well, have to be somebody who's over. We it. all know that Christian Bale could put on 300 pounds if yeah. he wanted to. <laughs> My name is do it. Well, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen the movie yet, but if you look at, um. The, the Stan and Ollie movie, they put uh, yeah. his name in the in the makeup, and he looked just like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can find someone to to play. I just don't know both John Candy and and someone like Chris Farley who who could who could play some play them to to like just honor them in, correctly. I've always I, been an advocate of mm -hmm. trying the new person. You know, like. Like, okay, so we all agree that there's probably no one better in Hollywood to be Iron Man than Robert Downey Jr. Okay. He was perfect. Yes. But I bet you there's an out-of-work actor somewhere that would have been better. Well, Christopher just... known when he played Superman. So the, but, but the point is that there's... Right. Well, yeah, he had done a couple things though at that point, right? Didn't he do like not oh. Master and Commander? He did a uh, pirate no, movie. No, right. no, no, no. Right, that's yeah. no fun. We wanna, we wanna envision people that we know. Uh, no, no, no. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing. But it no, out. no. I, I think like a bio, because I mean, like if we're thinking about biopics, like I mean, a great film was Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey as Andy Kaufman. Yeah, that was, and then the, the documentary on Netflix was even how he like became that character in Tony Clifton, like amazing. You want to know what my dream project is? I want to, I want to, uh, well, at the, I guess at the time it was going to be Netflix, but now it'll be Hulu, a biopic drama series based on seventies Marvel star, like with Stanley Kirby, Stan Lee, uh, Marie Severin, all, uh, uh, Dick, uh, all those guys. And I would, I would cast Mark Maron as Stanley. Who? Okay. I can see that. Who's gonna play our friend Tom Sienka? Who's <laughs> gonna play Tom Sienka? <laughs> I, mean, I, would, I would love to see it, like about the evolution, like all, all the you know, all the dirty laundry and and all the fun and all the craziness that. Yeah, but that, I, I, oh, seventies. Doing Mike, a Stanley biopic at some point, though, absolutely. Mike, is there any way that you can put up a picture from the internet over us right now? Of what? You should look up John Candy's son. He could no, play John no, Candy. No, no. Yeah, well, no, no, no. And his ki his kids are, are very active. Yeah, yeah. His, and like if you take a take a look at his son, Let if he could act, can do. I'm googling it right now. And who would yeah, know too. better than his own son what he was but, like, man? I'm wondering, like, what is what? So, okay, but now if we're gonna let let's talk about biopics here, right? What is and I'm not, and I'm not. This is not a knock to John Candy at all, but I mean, does he have an interesting enough life to have a biopic? 
Yeah. Like, like yeah. In, well, well, from that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Like, like look, look at look at look at Andy Kaufman. Like, like he Andy Kaufman was not. Maybe he was nuts, or he's he was a genius either or. And then his death and like the whole mystery. He's going to be back one day. Like there there was a story there. Yeah. I think you can make a story out of anything. It's just yeah, but, whether you have a good writer or not. But if you look at um, even some of the stuff Scott said, some of the stuff I've seen about like, just on interviews of Boston John, he was a just a normal guy. Yeah. He was just an average guy. He he loved being with his family, his kids. He just, you know, he was he was good when he was an actor and when he went to work, he took that seriously and did his job and he did it well. Yeah, he wasn't you know? very controversial, I guess. Yeah. No. It, you no. know, a lot of people were at now. that time, though. That's the thing. Yeah, you, know? you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be controversial either, but I guess that's the difference of making a movie that's going to be on the big screen, if there ever is a big screen any, again, uh, <laughs> on the big screen versus something that's going to be on the History Channel, you know? So, but I mean, you look at you look at entertainment in at that time period. I mean, I don't even know when the shift actually happened, but like, and people have always been interested in in things, but like, no nope, actors and celebrities never really took platforms back then. You know? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like how we're saying, like Vinny, you said John Candy yeah. wasn't controversial. It was the time um, you wanted to watch the Oscars before. <laughs> yeah, and, and don't get me wrong, there, there were certainly people that had agendas, but like you know, you weren't you weren't worried because you know John Candy was tweeting something out, or Eddie Murphy, you know, was caught in air. Well, I mean, Eddie Murphy got caught. That's a bad example. Let's forget it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like things like TMZ. Or Us Magazine, like, and I have this conversation all the time. Like when I was a kid, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong too about this, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Um, like I used to, as a as a television as a movie fan, like at seven thirty, I would I enjoyed watching Entertainment Tonight on Channel Two. Oh, see, this is where we're different because I used to watch A Current Affair. Boom. Well, no, but no, but that, but that was a different kind. I was like that was like the tabloid thing at the point. At, it was. But, thank you, Fox. When we when we were growing up, Entertainment Tonight with Mary Hart and John Tesh, you know, like and those, and then you had you had Leonard Maltin on there, and Leonard Maltin still to this day is a is a respected film historian, Absolutely. you know, and they and they Entertainment Tonight at that point was like, you know what, tonight's episode, when tonight we're gonna we're gonna go behind the scene of the new Tim Burton Batman movie, and like they would talk to Tim Burton, they would talk to Michael Keaton, and just show behind the scenes footage. They would. They would do a bit on like a musician or like, oh, Mary Lou Retton is doing this thing, whatever, something yeah. silly like that. Or they, they would do like a where are they now kind of thing. And they would go back to, you know, like, oh, you know, it's now 19, it's 1993 and we're going to reunite the cast of the Munsters, you know, and, and talk to the surviving cast members. And then like, you know, like I remember when Fred Gwynn died using the Munsters as an example, like, like they went and they inter interviewed, um, interviewed, um, Al Lewis, you know, and how and and how it came to. Whereas now shows like in I'm not it's, not it's what's the one on extra extra and Entertainment Tonight are really they really at this point are now just TMZ and Us Magazine. Like they're sitting here and yeah. talking, but and both shows are covering the same thing about who tweeted what or whose ass was showing in a yeah, picture, yeah, absolutely, stuff like that. And th those kind of stories, like and the, the perfect example I say to I think about this is so when Carrie Fisher died. And again, Carrie Fisher got all the the right tributes and everything that came with it, you know. And then her ma, then her mother, Debbie Reynolds, died afterwards, right? Now, and again, Debbie Reynolds is from that age of Hollywood, which is even well before we were around, you know. Yeah. And if Debbie Reynolds died under different circumstances that were not tied to her daughter's death, that's something that would have. Probably, I mean, it would have been mentioned, but it would have been glazed over, you know, because nobody really cares about that era of television or movies anymore. It's all about the Kardashians or Nicki Minaj or whatever the hot new person is. Well, and then there's also the aspect of people's attention span being like a goldfish, you know, like they, they don't. Yeah. I don't know that it even matters what the Kardashians do anymore. That's probably two years out. Now, Speaking, of goldfish. Speaking of goldfish, I say we should do one more question here before we wrap up for tonight. Kenny Mendoza has a great, great question. Yep. Now let me put it, put, put it on the screen here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so while you're doing that, let me also say that Barbara mentioned Uncle Buck 
and yes. Molly Russell's wart. I mean, Uncle Melanoma. That's what the kids call me, Uncle Melanoma. <laughs> Just a great line. Oh, my God, what a genius he was. It's so cute how like you and Barbara are. Here's, here's a nickel. Why don't you go downtown and find a rat to gnaw that thing off your face? Oh, my God. <laughs> Just genius. Who else, can, who else could deliver that? You know, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man was modeled after John Candy. Really? Yeah, they, there was there was a time where he was going to be the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. No, 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 he wasn't. No, I thought that that was the... No, John Candy was originally going to be Lewis. Oh, oh, Lewis, right. And then what's his name was Slimer. Moranis. No, and I, I forget who was Slimer, but no. Uh, John Belu James Belushi, John Belushi, sorry. Well, I thought Belushi was. I think I thought they originally wrote the wrote one of the roles for Belushi. Originally, not, they were ta they were talking about it was him and and, and right. what's your call Peter him and um, um, Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Bill Murray were the two leads, and then he died, and then in honor of him, you they designed the Slimer. I, yeah, I, 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 that, I, I, yeah. I thought Ramus wasn't supposed to be in it originally. Ramus wasn't supposed to be in it. He filled in kind of for John. And I, th and, I, th I, th and, I th and I think Eddie Murphy was originally the possibility for that. He part. was, and then they were like, he's going to steal the show. Let's not yeah. give it to him. Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy was supposed to be... Um, it is, he was supposed to be a, a Star Trek captain, too, believe it or not. They, they were going to attempt something like that at one point in time. Could, you, so, um, really. could you imagine how different... That movie would have been with Eddie Murphy as Winston. What was Winston in that movie for? Ernie Hudson was in that movie for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But he's a great guy. It would have been yeah. Ghostbusters starring Eddie Murphy, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but Bill Murray was a – the Ghostbusters Bill Murray. Well, everybody in Hollywood wanted to work with Bill. Bill now here, with Bill in everything. Now getting back to our original conversation – Bill Murray is someone who has had a renaissance in the last like 15 years. Yeah. For a while, he so, was kind of untouchable. Uh, you know, and, people wouldn't put him in movies. And I, so back before when you were kind of like, when we were talking about that, that is a, that is a self imposed. Uh, it was, yes. Bill Murray does. Like he just, you still have to like dial him up on a on like a corded phone, and he you have to leave like a voicemail to try to get a hold of him. Like he's super eclectic, and never wants to do anybody's projects, but the ones he also wants. a local. I think he lives around. He has a house around here too. Down down towards Nyack. Yeah. and he has a hand in the well, red. Let's, let's answer. Uh, let's answer Kenny Mendoza's question. What behind the scenes documentary of a really famous movie would you like to have seen been made, classic mm -hmm. or modern? So I feel like there's been so many already. You know, growing up, I I feel they they you know like Mike was saying on on the shows like Extra and stuff, they did all those behind the scenes. Yeah, and how things like I remember, and and I talked about this I think on my on my stream today. I you know I'm an animation geek. I I remember being um, however old I was. Little Mermaid came out. I didn't want to see it in the theater. It's a girls' movie. It's about a mermaid. But then you get the VHS and you rent it, and I watch it. And I'm like, this is one of my favorite Disney films of all time now. And but before that, even though I, I'm like, it's a girls' movie, anything I saw on TV that hey, look, this new Disney film is coming out, I would sit down and watch, even if I thought it was like I'm saying a girls' movie, like Little Mermaid. So I saw the behind the scenes. I would see them doing the pencil tests, the storyboards. So. For me, I, I, you know, I like watch. I, I loved watching the behind the scenes. I still do, but I don't know if there's a movie that I, I would say outside of something, you know, like a live action thing outside of like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like I would love to see a detail because there's a lot to that. The movie almost didn't make it. You know, the movie finally goes. Um, animation in in California, animation in London. You know, different things, all this stuff. Like there's a story there that I, that I would love to see, but I don't know if I want to see a behind. Well, maybe it is a behind the scenes documentary. I'd like to see maybe a documentary on that because it was a tough going to get that movie made. And this is something too related to something that we were talking about before with theaters mm -hmm. and Blu-rays and everything. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five dollars for the Blu-ray of 
you know, I just bought the the newest Blu-ray of um, the thing. Right, I have like twelve of them now. Uh, <laughs> there's tons of behind the scenes footage and deleted scenes and interviews and everything else. You're not getting that when you go to a theater for twenty five dollar ticket. Yeah. You know, so I'd much rather buy the Blu-ray and have all that extra. Or when you're oh. streaming on Netflix or yeah. Disney Play, you don't they, get all the they, they, I have seen, um, I think on my cable on demand, I have Fios. Um, they do do things now with bonus features you can rent for extra. Um, I've never done it. I've, I've rarely rented from that, you know, because I have every streaming service in the world. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, and, he, you know, I'm actually liking Disney Plus a lot because they are doing some behind the scenes things. They have that Imagineering um, show. They have a few other things that are kind of going behind the scenes of, of of the studio. Didn't they also do a thing where it's like at the end of the episode? I don't. Was it the Mandalorian? They had like stay tuned for like a five sec five minute thing about the making of the episode that. or something. They just launched like a behind the scenes of Mandalorian. Yeah, I, there's an eight episode. I, I believe it is. I haven't watched it yet. It's on my list. Maybe this weekend I'll do it. Um, but yeah, honestly, that it's hard. It's hard to pick one particular thing. Like one of the things that came to my mind was uh, the Frighteners. I know that the Frighteners was a originally going to be a Tales from the Crypt movie. No, I don't. Or a I Tales from the Crypt episode, I think, and then okay. they wanted to do a movie out of it. And then that movie slot eventually got taken by Bordello of Blood, which uh, bombed terribly. That is which I, I still love. Um, but and then uh, what's your call? It was written by the Frighteners. Was written by Robert Zemeckis and someone else. Uh, Bob, um, uh, the other Amblin, uh, the other uh, DreamWorks guy, Bob. Oh, whatever his um, name is. I know who you're talking about. It's yeah. Steven Spielberg, Bob What's His Face, and Robert Zemeckis. Um, so they wrote it, and then Peter Jackson directed it. So that would probably be an interesting story. And I can bet dollars to donuts that there there is a uh, there is a thing about it. It's a fantastic movie. I love that movie. Uh, I love I'm, Michael J. Fox. He's never been yeah. in anything bad. I have a two part. I have a two part answer to this. So my straight up answer is uh, actually Psycho. As crazy okay. as I'm not into horror movies, but Hitchcock Psycho was so controversial at the time. Um, it was the first modern horror movie. It, it was considered pornography. Um, it, it was it was essentially a flop. Like there's a, and now it's such a revered movie and it changed things. I would love to find out like a little bit about how that movie was made. Actually, there was an audio documentary that I listened to on it and it was really interesting. And I would love to see a visual. I would love to see a movie on it. But what I've wanted ever since I seen they did that uh, the documentary on Kevin's on uh, Tim Burton's uh, defunct Superman movie mm -hmm. uh, and really really interesting. I would love to see a series like almost a, like a like a Toys That Made Us type of thing mm -hmm. where mo uh, documentaries about movies that never made it, like George Miller's Justice League. You know, yeah, there's a, there's a, I have, I got in for a little while. I just got into finding old scripts and, and printing old scripts yeah. and, and reading. Spider-Man. Like, I want to see James Cameron's, like, well, how far do they get on that? Like, test there's, screen. There's so many movies that are yeah. just in yeah. limbo. You know, there's a. They never made it to the big screen. There's a movie called Pincushion that was supposed to be a John Carpenter movie that never got made. And essentially is. Mad Max Fury Road, and I don't know if you guys remember Hell Comes to Frog Town with uh, no, no, no one remembers that. Huh? See, I told you I like bad movies. It's uh, Roddy Roddy Piper. Um, okay. it's a terrible movie. It's essentially Fury Road, but that was it. <laughs> that it, it, it's like kind of like that, and never got made. And there's tons of movies like that. There's like and like original yeah. scripts, Freddy versus Jason and Ash. They wanted to do that, which then it turned into yeah. a comedy. Then, then, then there was also Triple Threat. It was the two of them and uh, Michael Myers. That was well, in the talk. Well, well, I'm gonna throw another movie movie series that almost got made that um, they were testing the markets with Scream Four. They because this was all Dimension and Miramax at the time. They were going to do, and I think he shut it down. They wanted to do um, Jay and Bob, 
meet the monsters. So they were going to essentially use the characters that Dimension and Miramax had at the time, like um, Hellraiser characters, like Michael Myers, and have Jay and Bob go up against them. What, which which were, one? Were, what were they in Scream 3? Oh, it's the Scream 3. I'm sorry. I apologize. They, they were in Scream 3, right? Yeah. Look, it's Connie yeah. fucking Chung. Yeah, I haven't seen that since a long time. I totally forgot about <laughs> yeah, that. They, they, that was that was a, a, another series of movies that they were tempted to do is have these two stoner guys. And everybody, hey, but you know what? I Our still life. love. I think um, people still argue that. Uh, um, uh, what's your call? It's, uh, Superman Flyby, the the J.J. Abrams uh, Superman movie, or not? It was yeah, J.J. Abrams Superman movie that never made it. Abbott and Costello meet the Wolfman. Uh, yeah. you know that's by the by the way just going back to um clerks because i know this was a conversation last week did you see um he's he's pitching to bring it back the series the animated show that's oh my god i'll watch in the we, brought yeah. that, we brought that into the universe that's our fault <laughs> a week later yeah so, so um, i'll take a cut but uh yeah i would definitely tell you i would love to see a series like that on stuff that didn't come mike what's the movie that you would like to see a documentary on you know, I but I the thing is, and going back to like what what uh, Ryan was talking about, and you know, and then you mentioned like the movies or the shows, the the toys that made us. There's the show, the movies that made us. I think so many of the move that I, again, I have I have such a huge DVD collection. You know, movies that I love, like Superman, like Ghostbusters, like the Muppet movie, like it's a mad, 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 mad world. Like the DVDs. Hi, Jen. Sorry. They they tell us. They, they, I like a lot. There's, there's so much on these movies. I, I, I don't. I would really. It's a hard question to think hard about. There's, there's, like there's it. so much out there already. I cannot yeah. believe. Like you have to go really deep into cult history. history. And you know, also these days you can just go on YouTube and people have talked about things. Exactly. Of, of also like I when I was in the hospital, um, I, I got some really bad channels, but I got like the Turner Classic Network. Yeah, and and I was watching a lot of old movies. I remember watching Casablanca, but they was supposed to have the uh, like a like a classic film festival in, in out in Hollywood at the time. So they were they were showing old um, interviews with celebrities, yeah. and you know from who were popular in the fifties and sixties and seventies and whatnot. And I just sat and watched a few of those, and I was like, here I'm getting the behind the scenes of these movies, you know? And it was like, some of them I've seen, some of them I've never seen before the movies. I'm like, oh, I should really check it out because I've heard of them, but just one of those things I haven't gotten around to them. So I feel like if you watch, look things up on YouTube or go watch like the classic network stuff, you're going to find these behind the scenes already in some form. You're not, you may not, it may not be an actual documentary, but in some form you're going to learn about you know these movies and how they're made from the actors' point of view, talking about the directors and everything. Well, right, and, and you have you have the the places like YouTube, or even like when um, Vinny and I went to go see Monster Squad live, they were promoting Wolfman's Got Nards. That's the documentary yeah. that they made yeah. about making yeah. the movie. So I, the other thing we have to remember too is, and you mentioned like Turner Classic Movies, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, we're at least in, in right now, and for the last, I'd say maybe twenty or so years, you know, maybe well, maybe thirty, maybe into the thirty-ish year, you know, um, people were thinking about like these behind the scenes, these extra feature kind of things. The further back you go, I mean, obviously people aren't around anymore. The technology just wasn't there where they were following people around the the, the studio or the the movie set, you know, and then things well, are lost over time. Mike, they even how how long they don't they show all the shows in like the the fifties and stuff like that that they didn't even record they just recorded over the tapes so yeah, there's yeah. tons of stuff that's completely oh, lost to history absolutely yeah very few I mean the only one I mean they always say what is it I love Lucy because because Desi Arnaz is like we need to record on film so it was preserved yeah. everybody was else wasn't recording on film. So you don't have a lot. And I'm I'm a big like classic comic. I love Abbott and Costello. I like watching Burns and Allen and stuff. And they're hard to find, even though there are some of their shows left. You'll um, never see a complete series of it. Yeah, yeah, you'll never see the full thing. There is like, animation wise, they would wash the cells off and just yeah. 
Yeah, it's like the Lighthouse of Alexandria, right? So much information is just gone. Yeah. All of the early television is gone. It's out in space somewhere, and that's the only place it exists. And radio waves that are in another galaxy by now. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's crazy. All righty, gentlemen. I think it's a, we, we're almost cusping the two hour mark. Yeah, here. wow. I was going to say. That's great. So um, I guess before we close out, um, so tomorrow night we have our Incredit chat with Father Evil. So for people who um, are into cosplay, um, if you if you like horror, Father Evil does all the horror shows. Um, and we're going to talk to him about the evolution of that character. And um, how, what, we'll talk more about cons and stuff. We'll talk more about horror. So if you like horror, that's going to be a cool thing too. So definitely come in for that. Um, and then again, Monday, I'll just plug as well. We have Tom Ruger mm -hmm. who will be with us. Who was, um, I guess, was a writer, director, producer, oh, um, yeah. pup named Scooby Doo, Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, uh, so many shows. So that's the next couple of shows. And I guess we'll be back again next week to pick a topic and go nuts with it in here. Yeah, and let me just yes, we always pick the topic about five minutes before the show. So we'll be <laughs> very prepared. Next I just, week. I just want to say this, and I've, I, I've, I've noticed this over the last few weeks. And I know Vinny commented on my backdrop here, you know, and obviously, every, but Ryan, like you, you look like you, your lighting is like the way you sit, your lighting is like perfect. And like, you look like you're a guest, like on a CNN thing. Cause I mean, yes, it's yeah. all like comic books and movie books and stuff behind you, but it's like this very like professional library in your yeah. backdrop. Yeah. And I, I, I love that the showcase books are behind you. They're some of my favorites to collect. I'm gonna, next week, I'm going to adjust them so it's a little bit something different. My top shelf books are actually about two feet above my head. Uh, <laughs> Come from the Library of Congress there. <laughs> I went to school for this, so I felt like I had to like represent because otherwise New Pulse would be like, what do we give you a degree for? It's just a lamp, guys. You just got to move a lamp. It looks I good. Know, but it gets too bright. It gets too bright. I got my Silverhawks lunchbox. All right. Oh, that is awesome. Well, gentlemen, it's been a slice of heaven. Yes. Oh, a big slice, not yeah. a little slice. It's been fun, and I'm glad I was able to finally join in with you guys. Welcome back, Mike. Glad to, Thank you. Glad that you're home, and glad that you're feeling well, and you're back in the land of Thank you. of the living. Thank you. Thank you. So I look forward to this again next week. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys, I'm going to end now. So right. don't forget to join us tomorrow for Father Evil. Yes. Cool. Right. Tune in. Tune in. Bye.